<coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to bring this county commission meeting to, uh, to order, please. And without further ado, ask Reverend Father Anastasios Harris from the St. Nic Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs to join us this afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord our God, you created us and brought us into this life and have said that apart from me you can do nothing. In faith we embrace these words as we gather this afternoon and entreat your blessing upon your servants. Look with mercy upon the Board of County Commissioners of Pinellas County. Grant unto them the grace to know and to do your will. Let them serve all the citizens with truth and righteousness. Inspire them with the courage to make and uphold the laws for this glorious county, for the good of all who reside therein. Give to our county officials the spirit of wisdom, patience, love, and understanding, that they may discern, discern the truth and impartially administer. Keep them safe and healthy in mind and body, so that they may fulfill their responsibility. Grant to all the civil authorities and residents of Pinellas County, as well as all those who labor for the county, the power to make this government continue to work so that all may prosper and live together in peace. For you are the King of peace, and to you we send up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. 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 Commissioner Eggers will lead us in the prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> and now we're going to do our presentation and awards, and we have one presentation for this afternoon. Okay, so this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, we have a proclamation for the National Workforce Development Month proclamation. And I would la like to ask Mr. Steve Meyer, the Chief Executive <coughs> Officer of Career Source Pinellas, to join me at the podium. Looks like he has a couple of people joining him as well. He's going to be, he is going to be accepting the National Workforce Development Month proclamation. Good afternoon, Dr. Johnson. Hello. Thank you for being here. National <coughs> Workforce Development Month was created in 2005 and is recognized annually in the month of September. In 2014, Congress reauthorized the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act with overwhelming bipartisan support and recognition of the need to strengthen the focus of the United States on the skills necessary to effectively prepare individuals for employment in local and regional industries. Investment in the education, training, and career advancement of the workforce in Pinellas County, known as workforce development, is crucial to the ability of Pinellas County to compete in the global economy. Collaboration among state and local governments, educational institutions, workforce and human services agencies, community colleges and training providers, local businesses, employment service providers, community-based organizations, and workforce development boards provides for long-term sustainable and successful workforce development across traditional sectors and emerging industries. 
Workforce development is crucial to sustaining economic security for workers in Pinellas County. Pinellas County recognizes that the workforce system and partner programs have helped build the economy of Pinellas County and provided increased economic opportunities and provides a pathway into 21st century jobs that support families while ensuring that businesses find the skilled workforce needed to compete in the global economy. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Pinellas County Board of County Commissioners that sem September 2023 be recognized as National Workforce Development Month. Would you like to say anything? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, thank you, commissioners, for your time and support today in recognizing National Workforce Development Month in September. Today I have uh, the pleasure, Dr. Cynthia Johnson, Director of Pinellas County Economic Development, and Ben Friedman from Duke Energy, who's one of our board members. The strength of America's economy is in part reliant on the skills and strength of its workforce. Pinellas County unemployment rate in June was 2.7%, with 62 job seekers for every 100 job openings. Nationally, we are facing a labor shortage of approximately 3.9 million work workers. A national study by Lightcast recently identified 4.9 missing and hidden workers. These are the workers who are out of the labor force for a variety of reasons but want a job. During a time of such un low unemployment, CareerSource Pinellas and our partners are working continually to identify opportunities to connect job seekers to employment opportunities, upskill the current workforce, and bring back the missing and hidden workers. So again, thank you for the opportunity, commissioners. Appreciate it. Hi everyone, my name is Ben Friedman with Duke Energy Florida's economic development team. I'd just like to uh, thank the uh, Board of County Commissioners here for recognizing career source and this work in workforce development. Uh, so very briefly, I'll say that with Duke, we covered dozens of counties across the state of Florida and multiple states in the U.S. And with our work, really, workforce development is so essential because there are a few factors that can make or break any type of project and what can be won in a community with the jobs, the capital investment that follow. And workforce is always one of the top issues that comes up. So again, thanks for addressing such an important topic. Thank you for your remarks. Dr. Johnson, are you sure you don't want to say anything? <laughs> I can't believe you. Uh, well, first of all, Ben used to work with us. Ben is part of our team and is now with our partners. But I wanted to just say how important workforce is to economic development because the things that we do every day to bring more and better jobs to our citizens mm -mm. is in partnership with career source. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here today.
All right. And so I would also like to make you all aware that Commissioner Peters is joining us this afternoon via Zoom. And though I can't see her, I don't think anyone else up here can. Oh, there she is. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Thank you for joining. We're going to be reaching out to you for your input. And if I forget, just please yell or somehow make me aware uh, that you're, you'd like to speak or be recognized. And, and we, we do need to take a vote of I those. I was just going to do that. You didn't <laughs> give me a chance. <laughs> um, could we all please uh, vote move, whether move, or not yeah, to? Yeah, move approval. Second. Second. Well, do you want to know what we're voting on? Uh, <laughs> to allow adjournment. Commissioner Peters to uh, vote and be active in this meeting while she's participating on, on, uh, on Zoom. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 OK, thank you so much. Thank you. OK, and now we are on to citizens to be heard. And um, first, we have Greg. Signorelli. Mr. Signorelli, please come on up. You'll have three minutes to speak. State your name and your address, please, from the podium. Commissioner, I have another gentleman with me. John okay, Edgar. hold on. Please come to the microphone. In the front. <coughs> Who's saying? And who is your use for this? This friend? is a, a neighbor, neighbor in the residence. His yes. name is John is this Edgar. Correct? You how sure? about can you, how about you identify yourself and state your address? Yeah, John Hedger, uh, 13343 92nd Avenue in Seminole, Florida. Okay, and you are Mr. Signorelli? Yes, I am. And your address is? 9253 133rd Street, Seminole, 33776. Thank you for being here. So you'll have three minutes to, to speak. I thought we'd have six total. No. You both didn't sign up. I huh? signed also. He signed. You did? But I was going to give my time to him. He's got all the words. It'd be right here. No. Is it John Hedger? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. So they're just going to go back to back. So six. Three minutes each. Three each. Three minutes each. each. Okay. okay. Can I Thank give my time much. to him? I'm sorry? Will I be able to give my time no. to him? No. Okay. Well, Pull the mic in so we can hear you. Okay, so I have four pages that I would like to read from. Do I place place them here where the camera can show oh, you what I'm talking about? I, I believe you place it right over the seal. The seal. Right over the seal. Upside down? No, no, no. no face up. Thank you, see what Okay. So if I may, um, thank you, commissioners, for your time today. Uh, we represent Oakhurst Trails. It's a small, uh, quiet, close-knit family neighborhood. Uh, we have an Airbnb that has come into the neighborhood at 13348 92nd Avenue in Seminole. We do not have an HOA, but we're looking to refresh the original deed restrictions that came with the home when we bought it. There's 31 homes, a mixture of two-story and single-story homes in the neighborhood. They're very close together. They're 14 feet apart. When you have rowdy parties and things like that, everybody hears it. So since February of 2023, remodeling and uh, work had gone on in this home, and they added a wall in the dining room to make a fifth bedroom. It wasn't permitted until someone complained. Now, these, these uh, current owners and property managers, they're doing things behind this without um, following the rules. So it wasn't permitted until someone complained. The permit was then pulled on March the 30th. Uh, it wasn't inspected until two months later, May 23rd, only because there was no access to the home. People guests coming and going. So they actually started renting this before the clear zoning clearance was given. So uh, the, the property managers took three times to submit this zoning clearance correctly. They left things out on the first one. They left other things out on the second one. Obviously, these people can't be trusted. 
but I'm going to give you some examples of, of what has happened in this neighborhood since it came in. Uh, uh, they they um, originally rented to more than 10 people sleeping there. The code calls for 10 or less. They've always rented to more than 10, even before the zoning clearance was given. Uh, the website originally showed 25 people could sleep there. Amazing. Um, so no more than 10 can sleep here, but we continuously see 17, 18, 20 plus. It's your clock up there, so just okay. keep that in mind. Well, um, there's parties, bachelor parties. There is uh, wedding events, gender reveal parties. Police have been called many times to move cars out of the way and quiet the noise. Uh, garbage is an issue that's always on the road constantly. We have, and I've given uh, Commissioner Peters pictures of what we're seeing. Okay, now it's your turn. <clears throat> sure. Um, Pick up? Yeah, I'll just add that uh, we raised our kids here. We've been living there for 25 plus years. Uh, a lot of the neighbors have. Um, our kids are older and now he has grandkids visiting. A lot of younger families have moved in the last few years um, to raise their kids because it's a great neighborhood. It's one road in, makes a circle, and the same road comes out. It's almost, and the houses are very close together. All our kids, when uh, they were growing up, they played on the street. No fear whatsoever of cars just zooming by in and out. Uh, no fear of the neighbors. We got to know all the neighbors. We knew all the neighbors. We had got together a lot. Now we have Airbnb there. That it's actually a party venue. Um, I can't say it any better than that. It's every weekend. It's a different party. Uh, there's usually six cars uh, parked there. Four in the driveway, two in front. I live right across the street from it, so I see it every 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 weekend. Different people. We've had uh, bachelor parties where uh, men have uh, been just sitting uh, with the garage door open, uh, sitting in their chairs, watching kids and, and women uh, walk by. Uh, we know that uh, from our neighbors with the young children that moved in before they opened up the Airbnb, which was February this year, they wanted to move here because it's a safe family neighborhood. Now it's not. Um, they're afraid to let their kids uh, run around and play in the neighborhood. We have a neighbor right next door to me to the left. His wife likes to run. She used to run around uh, uh, our block uh, every night. She won't do it anymore um, because they've uh, made comments. Men have made comments. Like I said, there have been bachelor parties. There have been men's teams, uh, uh, sports teams uh, there. Like I said, uh, uh, wedding venues, you know, parties. It, and sometimes they just line the street and around the corner with, with cars. It's just, it just <coughs> ruining our neighborhood. Um, I don't know what the laws are regarding uh, where Airbnbs are allowed to be. I use Airbnbs, I love using Airbnbs, but usually it's on a lake or near an ocean or, or some uh, neat town, but not in a small little family neighborhood. Uh, this was just a, just a mistake from the beginning. Um, like I said, we have, we have neighbors that moved in maybe a couple years ago. Um, they have kids, all of them under 10, maybe a few. And there's lots of them, they're all over the place, but they're, they're all talking. And if things don't change, they're gonna move. And this is horrible. It was a wonderful neighborhood, and uh, um, I hate to see this. Uh, next thing you know, uh, if somebody moves, you know, another Airbnb is going to show up. It's going to be another party venue. Our whole neighborhood will be changed to just a, a, a giant party venue, uh, and and it's just it's disgusting to me. Uh, first, got notified of this. Uh, my my nephew was visiting from Indiana. He was getting ready to leave the next morning, packing up his van, and he said there was a man urinating in the front yard. Um, that happened again where our neighbor uh, caused some people that were coming, move, uh, a group of guys coming for the weekend for whatever reason. He got a picture of someone urinated uh, as soon as they arrived uh, in the bushes. Uh, this is the kind of thing that goes on there, and, and this is what we see. Our neighbors heard parties and, and booming and stuff, so that's where it is. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes, Commissioner Justice. Maybe we could ask the county attorney to give us like a 30 second on what the current airbnb rules are and i'm sorry that you're going through that sure. and i would encourage you to call law enforcement when you do see do. the parking in front of the driveway anything like that that you can you know get enforcement immediately but if you could tell us we are unfortunately preempted by state law mm -hmm. that allows airbnbs to exist virtually anywhere um so that unfortunately ties our hands in regards to outlawing or you know doing away with the this as a use 
unfortunately, in residential zones, so I would suggest contacting some state legislators. We do have a local ordinance on the books that allows us to regulate some of the nuisance factors, a lot of what you just explained. Um, parking is one, noise is one, some of the, um, again, it, it gets at the nuisance factors that we can regulate. Um, you would need to most likely call law enforcement because I understand that these things are generally occurring in the hours of the night that we don't have code enforcement, which we do control as our own staff um, working. But that is unfortunately the best we can do at the local level because the state of Florida has absolutely tied our hands and disallowed um, us to prohibit these uses in residential zones. And we did contact um, our representative, Bernie Jocks, and he sat and listened to us for 35 minutes. We were only supposed to have 15, he gave us 35. He was so interested in it. We have pictures, we have documentation, and neighbors that have written letters saying this is just not to be in a small neighborhood like this. So again, um, we even had a 12-year-old girl that was rehabbing her knee from uh, surgery, from soccer, and she was running around the block getting her rehabbing in, and the bachelor party guys were sitting in the garage saying, hey, come over here for some, some action, you know? 12-year-old girl, she's just... So, um... Commissioners, we do have an active case on this location. I appreciate that, Barry, but further, I would like to add this particular issue into our agenda for our upcoming joint legislative meeting to bring to the legislators attention that we've been made aware of this and since they <laughs> have tied our hands maybe they'd like to take some action to untie them mm -hmm. i think it's the very least it. that we can do so thank you for bringing well, your concerns you to us i think on behalf of the whole commission you can tell that this is not right and there's got to be some way to resolve it. So we'll keep on working together. Right. To Our code enforcement person, Officer Hartsock, has been awesome. She even wonderful. worked last weekend, not this past one, but the one before, just to be able to write tickets for them increasing the website. They go from 10, they jump it up to 16 on the weekend thinking nobody's going to catch them. Well, she caught them. Good for you. Four <laughs> tickets, but it takes a lot of her time, and so I'm sure. we're hoping that um, we could get rid of this thing once and well, for all. Yeah, thanks for hearing us. We're just making this story known. Uh, we're going to make it known everywhere we can, possibly, if we need to contact. Uh, uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You got it, exactly. <laughs> so, thank, thank you, you thank gentlemen, you very much. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have Dennis Ryan. Come forward, Dennis. State your name and your address, and you'll have three minutes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Dennis Ryan, and I live on 11335 110th Terrace in unincorporated Largo. I've been at that address for 45 years. Uh, what I want to discuss is the ongoing uh, paving project in Largo, unincorporated Largo. Uh, the asphalt that I paid for, and I actually paid for it when I moved here, we had to pay for the street, was ripped up and replaced with black asphalt with non-reflecting aggregates in it. Uh, this is material with zero non-reflective aggregates that's been paid. My old street had it, so it was considerably cooler during the day. The neighbors are complaining they can no longer walk their dogs. It's too hot. I can feel the street, the heat of the street, halfway up my driveway. The heat continues into the night. Um, asphalt's known to absorb 90, 90 to 95% of the sun's heat. This will raise the surrounding air temperature. This paving is bringing unnecessary and unwanted heat into the neighborhoods. It'll raise the cost of cooling for the homeowners. I spoke to the county engineer, Mr. Bayondi, about the project. I went around and around with him. He didn't seem to understand my complaint. At the end, he admitted it's not the same mix that I had. 
I had a Georgia mix, which had high reflectivity compared to what I have. So, so let me just state right here, climate change and global warming is real. It does not matter how many times right-wing media and right-wing politicians <coughs> say it is a hoax. It's happening. Humans must make better choices. This paving project was not a smart choice. If you walk out onto Doomy Road or 113, you'll see that it's got highly reflective aggregates in the mix that cools it considerably during the day. The mix I have in front of my house is solid black. And where did your mix come from? Uh, I understand it was called a Georgia mix years ago. No, years. I mean the new mix that they put down that doesn't have what it's supposed to have. Where did it come from? Yeah. You'd have to ask the engineer, I don't know. I spoke to the crew laying it, even before, when they were tearing it up and asked them what they were putting in. And I was very dissatisfied with the answer. So I spoke and th then I got with the engineer. They all pushed me to the engineer. Kudos to the engineer, he drove to my house, but I wasn't there, I was in Boston that week. So, but I do have a meeting with him. I have to schedule for this week. All right, but, thank uh, you. That's thank, you. My case. thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is David Balagetis, Jr. Hi, good afternoon, Commissioners. David Ballard Geddes, Jr. I live on Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. This is a photograph of a wetland beside the Sutherland boat ramp in Palm Harbor just off of Alternate 19. The cattails have been sprayed with an aquatic herbicide or a mixture of herbicides killing the indigenous vegetation that belongs in the wetland. The Brazilian pepper, as an invasive species, has not been sprayed, and it remains alive and is healthy. The contrast as to what has been killed versus what remains alive is alarming. The photograph displays evidence of environmental dismanagement and represents a lack of proper stewardship in protecting the environment as legislated by statutory law. The killing of all the indigenous aquatic plant species using aquatic herbicides has been rampant through the state for years. Meanwhile, the government ignores invasive species such as Brazilian peppers that grow opportunistically both in wetlands and in upland habitats. Furthermore, the state has intentionally engaged in the planting of many non-native plant species such as bottle brush and oleanders, viburnum and pittosporum, all of which are poisonous. Simultaneously, the state promotes the systematic killing of our indigenous wetland plants, applying chemical sprays such as copper diquats destroying our water supply and its process. Florida was once full of fruit trees. The government, to my recall, has never planted a single fruit tree in the promotion of its development practices, yet the state, the county, and the city has engaged in the planting of non-native, invasive, poisonous plant species while systematically spraying noxious chemicals into our wetlands, deliberately killing off, methodically eradicating our indigenous aquatic plant life while ravaging our vital water supply. The combination of no longer having any fruit trees but having only non-native poisonous plants planted by the government while simultaneously <coughs> killing our indigenous aquatic vegetation, poisoning our water supply with chemicals is the definition of a government that needs to be pulled out by its roots and discarded as an invasive act of deception. Thank you. All right. Uh, and now we are on the consent item, agenda items three through. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Pound. I apologize. Please come forward. 
All right, Greg Pound, Largo, Florida. I want to read Psalms chapter 75, verse um, 20. It says, it says, Have respect unto thy covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitation of cruelty. You know, when you spell man without God, you spell God backwards, you get the word dog. And you want to see the cruelty of man, you just look at the, the situation with China and, and these countries that are communist countries. You know, it's amazing. I seen this thing on the news the other day about, um, about China buying up all our farm fields and Bill Gates also, the lar one of the largest owners of our farmland. And the guy's, um, and he states, you know, he's, this is all for China. And he states it. And so what we have is when I speak, a lot of times people don't understand when I speak about the white people and how evil they've gotten. Every war in this country has been white people on white people. We've had white traitors, and you study our history, you read the framers, and you see who they were fighting against. And so what we have is a major problem with, um, with some real evil people in positions of power. Now, we have a problem with the abortion thing over here on um, Bel Air and Highland. Now, this last week, this guy's arrested for walking across the sidewalk. They've got it marked off where if you want to walk down the sidewalk down from the abortion clinic, you can't walk on the public sidewalk. You have to walk in the street of Highland with traffic, oncoming traffic flying up and down Highland. Okay, now you need to go out there and look at this and ask yourself, what if one of these cars hit one of these people? The county is going to be liable for it. I don't know who else is going to be liable for it. But you can't even walk across the public sidewalk because it crosses their driveway. They're not standing in the driveway. They never have stood in the driveway. And so this is a big problem we have. I mean, why in the world are they pushing? The Bible makes it real simple. Thou shalt not murder. And, the, the, and, the, and, and killing innocent blood, children. Now California wants 28 days after birth you can kill the child. If you're tired of getting up and having to feed the baby or taking care of the baby or whatever, you can kill it. They want to push laws. And kill. This, is how, this is how reprobate the culture has, got, has gotten in America. We have become a culture without God to our own destruction. And we're going to pay for it. I mean, if we think that we can keep going and keep living and just, and, and the people, I mean, we are legislating evil. You can, they're legislating morality is what you're doing. You're taking what's morally wrong and making it lawfully right. And, and that's what you're doing. I mean, we had a big um, protest against this thing in Lakeland this, this Sunday where, the, where all these transgender people are giving out school books, school material to the little children. I mean, there was people who came in from all over the state to protest this, and it was in the news and so forth. And, it's, and you know, why now are they trying to corrupt the children, trying to destroy our families? The biggest dollar now in the American court system is family court. All the drug problems we have, that when they, I, was, I was screaming when they started putting the little kids on Respadol, or is it Redolin, the Redolin drug. And, and this started in our public school system because said the boys are too active. The boys aren't sitting there. They're not like the little girls. So we want to make the little boys like the little girls that'll sit in class. And they put them on this drug. We have a whole generation that this went on consistently. And now we have a, a drug addicted society that's out of control because they can't manage themselves. And this is what we've done. And, it, and it's, it's just destroying us. All right, and now we are on consent, which is items through th three through 17. May I have a motion? Over Madam, Second. Sorry, Madam Chair, um, can I please request to pull and defer item number six to the September 7th meeting and then a voice vote on the remaining items? You want to pull item six? Yes. Pull and defer it, please. Pull and defer. Defer till time certain date or? September, September 7th. I'm sorry, I missed that. Thank you, Commissioner. I move approval of the consent agenda, deferring item number six until date certain. Second. All right. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right. Now, number 18. Good afternoon, commissioners. Item number 18 is interlocal agreement between the sheriff's office and the St. Pete Clearwater International Airport for law enforcement services mm -hmm. for this next year. Move approval. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Sorry? Are we using the board? Oh, okay. You're opening the board. <coughs> Commissioner Peters. I'm a yay. You're a yay. Please record Commissioner Peters as a yay, and that's a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. 
number 19. This is fiscal year 2024 elite event funding recommendations as provided by the Tourist Development Council, including a waiver of the program's $2 million funding cap under the Tourism Development Plan. You have 34 events up to the maximum total of just over $2 million. Move approval. I have uh, questions about this. All right, Commissioner Latvall. Uh, probably for Brian. Okay, Brian. I'll second um, for purposes of discussion. The Reliant Quest uh, Beach Day, I noticed that that, um, I think it didn't meet like category one. Um, it was item 33. And I was wondering why that was the case. Um, I believe the Reliant Quest, um, I believe that bowl did not meet category one because category one uh, requires um, national broadcast of the event. My understanding is that during the ESPN broadcast, they normally will show a clip of that beach day festivities with the two teams. Um, and I don't know if that's a contractual thing with ESPN or whoever broadcasts that bowl, uh, but it's something that um, they do in conjunction with the bowl and with the two teams that are participating. And so I just want to voice my support for that, especially if it's included in the broadcast uh, sure. every year. Sure, and they do include, as you mentioned, they do include a clip, some promotional clips uh, during the broadcast of the actual bowl game of um, the uh, beach day. However, um, with this, this um, the, the, actual beat, the actual event needs to be broadcast uh, on a national broadcast. And because the actual event, Beach Day, is not broadcast, um, that's why it is not considered. Oh, okay. So just the small snippet Correct. would not count? Correct. Okay. Would they be eligible for other funding from, um, from you guys, uh, not including this? Um, down the road well he, here's one of the things that um, this this was this fun this uh, program was put into place when we had some events come forward and ask for the point of this is to put heads and beds in for right. marketing exposure and so there were some events that came forward and asked for uh, funding um, because they did provide that return on investment and so as in response to that um, the elite events program was put together and so it's uh, as you see here, um, we do have funding for that in the elite events. We do recommend funding for that, and um, that program or that uh, actual event is great. We've got funding for it, but specific to that event, the separate event, um, uh, there's really not at this time. This would be the program to go for. Okay. Has there been resistance from the city of Clearwater or anything like that? Not, not to my knowledge. Okay. And, and the city of Clearwater is represented by the mayor and on the TDC board, so. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. I also um, noticed that the MLK um, Family Fund Day and Parade is not funded yeah. in this round. And because we went through this last year. And it was funded last year. Yeah. That. We went through this last year, so um, uh, either you can speak to it or I'm, I'm recommending that they get funded for the amount that they were asked. and. How we need to make that happen? I would like to see us make that happen. Sure. So I'll speak to it from staff's perspective. Last year was the first year that we had this new um, uh, evaluate scoring uh, process, where staff uh, you submitted the application. Staff had to outline criteria. We ranked them, and um, it last year did not meet. Uh, you need a score of 70 based on the marketing and the economic benefit data. Um, it did not score high enough for staff to recommend funding last year. Um, uh, same thing happened this year. They did not receive a high enough score, a minimum score of 70. Um, so we didn't recommend funding for them in elite events. However, um, we did talk to them and, and they have received cap, uh, elite event funding in the past, as you mentioned. Prior to that, we um, uh, provided funding from some other funding sources that we had. Uh, we found that the uh, funding that we were providing to them through the elite event process wasn't going to marketing the destination. It was going to some um, hotels, uh, room nights, whatnot. 
Um, so we do have a program, an incentive program, and we do pay for some rooms on some large scale events. Um, so we recommended that they connect with our um, uh, meetings and uh, events team uh, for, some, for an alternative funding source. And we did that with all of the um, uh, events that we didn't recommend approval for. Um, go go for an alternative funding source. That so we let have. me share with you with you all, and and I think I've said this before, because um, I've been involved with this organization even before I became a county commissioner. The way that they were scoring it before, it was based on how many bed nights that were being utilized by that organization. The issue with this is. Most of the bands are local or they're within a bus ride here. So they come in, they're in the parade, they leave. The only ones that will typically stay overnight is when FAMU comes or Bethune Cookman, Talladega State, large bands. But when they come, according to those college rules, you have to be able to provide them with um, certain meals because of their restrictions. You have to pay for the bus for them to get here. Um, and then they have to have so many adults based on the number of people that's in their band. So when you're talking a, a large band, um, you could have 20 to 25 adults. So for every year that they went before the council, it was always an issue because they were not utilizing the percentage. And this is not at you. They were not utilizing the number or percentage of bed nights that they were looking for in the category because you got to find some way to cut money. I mean, this is a huge parade. This is a huge event. And last year, the numbers, well, not last year, this year in January, the numbers went way back up um, versus when it was um, COVID and the <coughs> numbers kind of went down. They had the parade. And um, then they have some other events, including uh, um, they have the Battle of the Bands event. They have um, something where they're looking at scholarship opportunities that's funded by somebody else, not funded by us. But this is a very large event that happens and celebrates Dr. MLK. It is the largest, and I'm not just saying that. You can look it up. It's the largest in the nation. So for us not to fund this event, um, I, I think, is not something that I would be willing to support. So I know last year it wasn't funded. Um, I think it was Charlie that made a motion or something that um, it be included, and I seconded it. Um, I am asking staff um, and the TDC to please find a way, um, and I'm asking my colleagues if they will support it, to find a way to fund this event. It is huge, and they are never going to be able to make the number of bed nights because in order to do that, you've got to pay for three nights of hotel stay for these colleges, which when you're talking two to a room, because the colleges have specific rules, two to a room for three nights, plus staff, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. And I'm telling you, we raise money from all other places. I mean, the budget is not small, and, and they've scrimped it down as much as they possibly can. So um, I'm asking that we find a way to help them out. Questions? Commissioner Eggers? Yeah, I was just looking at the scoring, and it showed it uh, at like 16 under marketing and sponsorship. Um, is there something like if we recommend the 75000 that we maybe make it contingent on them using part of that monies for additional marketing of the, of the event? Or is that, was that an area that they were lacking in? They were lacking in the marketing side because they weren't – we, we, in the application we asked, you know, how are you going to use these funds to market the event and what marketing mm -hmm. opportunities uh, exist? And they were lacking there. So – um, we've worked with them. We can continue to. And on all of these, uh, between the approval of funding and the execution of agreement, we go back and forth on those marketing opportunities. So we certainly, absolutely, if, if it was approved, we would have those conversations with them on how we can get the most out of our money in a marketing aspect. And Commissioner Eggers, they do mark their own Bay News 9, mm -hmm. TBT, Catalyst, WMNF, um, 99 Jams, um, you know, I don't know if they put that information in there, you know, but when when you turn on the television, the end of December, beginning into January, you consistently see this event. It is, it is, it's out there, so I can't answer to all of that, but I'm just sharing yeah. that information. So my question would be, what is it they would have to do in order to meet that 70 number? 
I mean, there, are there other organizations that mirror what they're doing? Maybe not exactly, but there must be some techniques that they can utilize that would help them reach that number. We'll certainly suggest those. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know what, what uh, uh, means of advertising we would include in that. We work with our uh, marketing agency um, to determine um, what those deliverables are and the value put placed on each of those. I certainly, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, I certainly will support um, Commissioner Flowers' recommendation that they get added um, for the seventy-five thousand. Um, do we need to take something off of here um, as a result, or can we just add them? Well, I will tell you, we're we are asking for a waiver now because we're over the threshold uh, that's outlined the two million dollar threshold. So. It, it wouldn't be a, you've got to take something off. We're already over it, so. so and let me I, wouldn't, ask, I wouldn't want to punish any, you know, I wouldn't yeah. want to punish somebody to get some. Let me ask you this, Brian. How long have we been at that $2 million threshold? I believe since the program, since the elite event program began. And how um, many years has that been? I believe <laughs> six. <laughs> four months, you've learned that. The point, um, I'm, yeah. the point yeah. I'm trying to make is, Maybe it's time when we have our TDC meeting that we discuss raising that $2 million threshold. God knows in every other category, the numbers have gone up exponentially. And it doesn't seem quite fair to leave this number at the same level when we have this kind of a request coming forward. It's obviously not only geared towards our county, but it's for the kids. I mean, it helps benefit our young people as well. And that's kind of where my, my soft spot is. I looked on their uh, website earlier because uh, I noticed that they weren't included. And they have some impressive sponsors. Um, and they had, uh, I believe, an NBA player that gave a testimonial. Um, and it looked like they've had quite a few people attended. So, I mean, the fundraising's the parade happens on MLK Day. The fundraising starts the very next day. Yeah. Um, because it's it's huge. Um, and then all that is needed between security, sanitation, um, uh, parks and rec, um, vendors, small business vendors coming in to, you know, sell refreshments along the parade route and then all the other things that they put on. And then what they give back to the community for the youth throughout the year. So... Mm -hmm. so Commissioner Flowers, do you know how much money they raised this year? That's just kind of a... I'm sorry. No, I, I was ripping and running and didn't get a chance to. Um, but I could send a quick email. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think this event is an important one for our county. I think it speaks to... <coughs> it's a huge. It's huge for the county, for the region. It's, it speaks to the culture that, you know... That's so important. Uh, so I, I certainly would support it as well, uh, and I think it 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 rises up above just another project analysis. I mean, there's other projects that didn't quite make it, but this is different. It's 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 a, it's a unique and special event. So I too would support that as an add-on. If I can make a suggestion, yes. Your staff recommendation includes a waiver of the two million dollar funding cap. If you were to approve this particular project, I would recommend that you also waive the criteria as to this project only, uh, just to make sure that you're clear as to your intention. All right, keeping that in mind, Commissioner Peters, are you listening to this conversation? I am, I am. Do you um, have any input? I, th I, I think the, you know, saying you're only waiving for this one project, um, because if we don't do that, I think it opens the door for a lot more other projects to come that didn't make the criteria. Um, and so I just don't want to open up a big can of worms. Um, but uh, no, I, I would I would support it. But if there's a reason why it's not coming through, then maybe the TDC has to look at uh, how they score a little differently then or something like that. Because this is going to come up every single year. and. 
um, and we, we keep making exceptions, then somehow we have to look at the criteria to see how they fit in in the future instead of doing this that. every year. But thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Brian? I just want to comment. Yes. I mean, I think that's how it's designed. It's designed so that the TDC does an analysis and has criteria and makes recommendations. It then comes to us to make any adjustments that we think right. are important that maybe don't fit the exact mold of of that knowledge. of those the criteria. So I don't necessarily. I mean, it doesn't mean that the process can't be amended or changed or fixed or improved, but. Um, if, it, if some don't make it, that's okay. That's what they're supposed to do. We're supposed to do something perhaps a little different at times, and I think this is one of those instances, so I don't necessarily have an issue um, with the process. Okay, well, I'm sure between Brian and I, we'll bring these comments back to the TDC board, and we'll be governed accordingly for next year. Okay, so what are the what is the pleasure of the Commissioner board Scott's this? trying to say something. Do, do Commissioner we, Scott, I apologize. Thank you, Madam Chair. Do we need to we have a motion in a second? Yes, do we, we need do. to do we need to do this as a separate vote or do we need to amend the motion and we need to, we have to change what she said. I, mean, I think what you I mean, could I think you could have a single motion on all of this. I know that there was a motion made. I think Commissioner Justice made it if you would like to the staff recommendation, like I said, includes a wa a waiver of the two million dollar cap. What I would recommend is that you waive the criteria in regard to this one project only in addition to the waiver of the, because of course this would add to the excess over the cap. I would withdraw my motion and I will make a motion to approve the agenda item as directed by staff with the stipulation of waiving our criteria for the MLK Dream Big Parade project. I'll second. Okay, so shall we open the board, voting board, okay? And Madam Chair, and I'm a yes, Madam Chair. I'm sorry? She got it. I'm a okay. yes. Thank you. I would like to say thank you to each and every one of you for supporting that effort, as well as staff. Brian, good job. Well, you, oh, good job. Not at you, but good, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know I love you. Uh, but, absolutely noted. Absolutely noted. <laughs> thank you so. Thank you so very much on behalf of the community. I really appreciate that. On behalf of myself as well. Great. Thank you, everybody. Uh, now we are on number twenty. Item number 20 is an MSTU for the YMCA Suncoast for the replacement of sunshade structures, $15,950. Move approval. Second. All right. Can we open the voting board? And I'm a yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Peters is a yes. And that's a unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Now we are on 21. This is a portable housing program project funding recommendation. This is for Founders Point um, by Pinellas Affordable Living. Uh, this is for $665,000, 15 uh, unit housing rental uh, with special needs earning 60% or less area median income. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Could you please open the voting board? And I'm a yes. Commissioner Peters is a yes. Thank you. And uh, <coughs> number 22. This resolution is adopting the downtown Palm Harbor streetscape and parking strategic action plan, which identifies future improvements in the greater Palm Harbor area. And before we move forward, members, we have a citizen to be heard. David, please come forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. David Ballard Geddes, Jr. I live at Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. I, I feel there's, there's a lot to be talked to talk about with what's being racket, racketeered in, in the downtown Palm Harbor area. Um, the, the rundown, blighted conditions of downtown Palm Harbor, I feel are being used deliberately um, as a way to formulate and privatize and privatize downtown redevelopment zones and insurrect a third party form of, of power as based on Home Rule Charter Section 2.04Q in hopes of formulating a, a privatized tax base. Uh, and uh, use Chapter 159 of the Florida State Statutes in effect to levy into the equity of our homes to uh, support 
uh, infrastructure scheming, um, the resolution in support of this uh, agenda item uh, is uh, highlighting uh, landscaping, uh, benches, bicycle racks, and streetscaping, lights and such that does not include any foundational development such as water pipes. The water pipes coming down my street are close to being 80 years old sewer systems and so forth. We need foundational development done before we put down new sidewalks, before we put street lights in, before we put all the decorations on top of aged infrastructure that will have to be replaced. So in order to build a town, you must have a foundation underneath it to support that. Um, I feel as though this resolution um, needs to be denied. Um, because we'll have to rip out those street lights, we'll have to rip out those sidewalks in order to eventually <laughs> replace the water pipes that are beneath it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners? Madam Chair. Yes. I, I, would, uh, I would like to take the opportunity to have just a brief presentation. Um, it's, it's a lot of slides here, but perhaps somebody could present it rather quickly just to kind of hit the highlights about what, uh, what is being planned in That's downtown. Right. and. Uh, uh, some of the some of the things are, I think, really exciting and good. And to uh, the previous speakers' comments, those those infrastructure issues are not mutually exclusive from what's going on here. So, um, including stormwater, including replacing some of the line of uh, pipes and stuff. Yeah. Go Thank ahead. you, Mr. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Scott Swearingen. I'm the Long Range Planning Manager. With the, long, with the Housing and Community Development Partner in Pinellas County. Hey, Scott, I, could you speak up just a little? Oh, just, I mean, I, I it's just still not pick, picking up there. Thank you. Um, I appreciate your time, and um, I'm respectful of your time. Thank you for having me. The resolution before you is the adoption of this strategic action plan. It is indeed a strategic action plan. And where this plan comes from is the downtown Palm Harbor master plan with a lot of great public input, uh, business input, stakeholder input, was adopted by this board in 2020. And also incorporated into Plan Pinellas, which is our county's comprehensive plan. Uh, so it's a policy guiding document um, that's been adopted, it's been approved by the state, it's been recognized by the state. And so that's where this plan comes from. The Master plan includes 10 uh, recommendations, or they're, they're called targeted efforts, for which um, this plan emanates. Um, exploring opportunities to improve the pedestrian experience on a downtown with additional amenities like lighting, signage, wayfinding benches, bike racks, and exploring solutions to address some of the parking issues that we have in a downtown, considering both the daily parking needs as well as the larger community needs. And so the strategic action plan focuses on these targeted efforts. That's what it comes out of. Um, Commissioner, I'll just, um, I'll take just a quick detour, uh, Commissioner Eggers, to um, some of the things that you were mentioning and from uh, the public input. This county, uh, for many years now, has employed um, kind of like, a, um, when we look at projects uh, to incorporate, we, we start to look at all facets of the needs. So for example, if we have a need and if we have uh, an approved plan that documents streetscape improvements, we'll look and see um, are there other projects that are going to come about like water line improvements, like <coughs> sewer improvements, and the other type of infrastructure improvements that are coming down the pike and how do we incorporate those, those into as well. So we don't go in and we make one set of improvements and then a couple years later we, gotta come, we come back and here's another CIP project, we're gonna make another set of improvements. So a lot of times these, these projects are kind of, they're, they're compiled into one giant project. So it's not just kind of going in and doing one um, at the expense or the, the neglect of another. So within this plan, we, it's both a, for parking and for streetscaping. Um, again, that emanates from the master plan. But we, and we've also, so we've included, we, with the parking assessment, we have parking strategies that can be employed in order to address the parking demands and maybe even try and lower parking demands. And then we've also created a specifications book for streetscape elements that can be used because 
right now we're experiencing uh, new growth and redevelopment in downtown Palm Harbor. And as projects come through um, to, you know, to our pleasure, what we've seen, uh, developers and property owners want to make improvements. They want to make improvements in the street, in the right-of-way, adjacent to the right-of-way. And so what we're looking to do is to try and find, figure out what are those elements of streetscape, um, include those in a specifications book, so that we have something that we can turn to when redevelopment occurs. Either if the county is initiating redevelopment or uh, the private sector is initiating redevelopment, um, we can have something so that we can continue to have this cohesive, um, this so cohesive streetscape and design and character throughout the downtown. And finally with this uh, plan, we have a list of priority projects that have been identified that we would hope to annually look to see if there's any chance that we can, that we can bring those pr um, into our uh, CIP program. The first component with our parking assessment, uh, this, we went out and we had consultants do um, a parking inventory. Uh, we took kind of uh, parking conditions at peak season levels along the weekend, so we got kind of a, the tail end of a spring break here. And what we found is that, um, you know, the busiest um, time of that study period of Friday from 8 to 8.30, 60, or 76% uh, of the uh, parking areas were at capacity. What I think was really important that came out of this is that, um, as you might expect, we, we have these hot spots, these areas of downtown Palm Harbor that are really exciting, energetic, lots of the restaurants are concentrated, and so you barely find parking turnover. But what we found in the inventory that I think was quite telling is that, if you just go kind of a one or two minute walk from these areas, you can m most often find uh, available parking. So within a one to two minute walk of these hot spots, you can find that parking that you need. You just might not find it right in front of your destination. The analogy being in a Walmart on a busy day, you may have to park at the back of the parking lot. You've got a one to two minute walk to the front of the store, kind of the same thing, but we're in a downtown area. So it's really getting the word out to help people understand that there is more parking than just in front of a particular business in these hotspots. And a lot of the parking strategies uh, that, were, that came out of this plan are the kind of strategies that we can incorporate into some of the streetscape recommendations that you'll see in just a moment. And so those parking strategies like uh, parking read, um, uh, share parking agreements to try and explore doing those between businesses, um, better usage of alleyways, uh, so we can park behind the buildings where we have additional um, areas um, to bring the parking right off directly off the street and onto the property, but into the back. Looking at event scenario parking plans, so we can better park these events so that we can find uh, better ways to, to get people to and from and throughout. And just a few in the plan. I'll just kind of hit them briefly. And through the assessment, a lot of good things that were found through the assessment. Um, as far, we've got some really good bones in the downtown. A couple decades ago, there were great efforts made to really look at the streetscaping and to go through the, you know, the cross sections of these right-of-ways. Um, some of the things that were also found, uh, you know, a lot of mismatched landscaping, a lack of shade trees really throughout the downtown, kind of problematic. Um, and just some, some aging kind of infrastructure, streetscape infra infrastructure that we can start to look to um, begin to replace um, in the coming years. Again, the opportunities reflecting on what we already have, it's really about strengthening what's already there. So looking at those elements as we go through and those, as, as projects come in, as we relook at these streets to try and make improvements to bring the cohesive streetscape scape elements. Um, really focusing also on intersections and crossings. This is the point in a neighborhood downtown where people walking uh, meet the people driving, and those are some very important areas to look. So to give a lot of focus to those intersections and the crossings. And then considering all these typical streetscape elements as we prepare a specification book for landscaping, lighting, signage, uh, street furniture, those types of things. And finally, we have, uh, we've prepared concepts in the plan that highlight some of the key intersections um, and just um, segments uh, of streets, just kind of hitting the highlights there. And what they're intended to do is really to start to show the possibilities to provide some vision based on the streetscape elements and some of the strategies that have been identified throughout the plan. So this kind of gives you a sense of how can you take those elements and those strategies and start to apply them to various parts of downtown Palm Harbor. So we put those in as more of kind of a visionary um, effort to, give you, to show some of the possibilities. So like along 
the Florida Avenue from 8th Street to um, Alt 19, um, Florida, uh, the intersection of Florida Avenue and Omaha Circle, just giving some ideas as to some things you know that, that you can conceptualize doing in the future. Along on Love and Street and then some other intersections and some other streets as well, we provided these, these details in there from cross sections to renderings uh, to site plans. And then finally in the plan, uh, we had a list of projects that have been identified. Um, these are again these projects that we would hope that uh, in the future we could look to see where we have funding opportunities that may come about. Always looking for grant money, looking for money from the state um, and from others uh, to where we could bring in and start to pay for some of these items um, if we can get them in our capital improvements plan. And then those projects are organized uh, in the plan and then provided on a map for easy identification so we can constantly be pointing to them as we're looking to uh, discuss them and bring them forward. So we respectfully request that this board um, adopt the resolution uh, that would adopt the um, parking um, and streetscape strategic action plan. And then moving forward, what we'll be doing, we'll be exploring those funding opportunities uh, from state, uh, federal, wherever we can find them, wherever we can apply them. Because as we all know, the first and foremost um, important component when you're looking for grants and funding is having a project identified in an adopted plan. So having an adopted plan that shows these projects is really a leg up for us when it comes to looking for funding. And if we can um, furthermore, you know, review these projects um, annually to see if we can incorporate into our schedule of capital improvements and our CIP portfolio review process. That's all I have for you this afternoon. I appreciate your time and I'm here should you have any additional questions. Thank you. Commissioner Eggers. Yeah, uh, well, thank you for, for going through that, and I certainly support the resolution. I, I, there's an awful lot going on in and around downtown. I know Nancy McKibben and working close, closely with the merchants and the chamber down there, talking a, a lot about Nebraska. Um, obviously, the roundabout is just about to be opened up uh, and, full, and finished. Um, they have a local business down there that is, is doing the garbage pickup on every Monday. Um, as just as an offer to the community. Um, uh, there's, uh, the merchants have also reached out to Duke Energy to try mm -hmm. to do something about upgrading the lights that are downtown to improve that, and that they would take over the operating expenses. So there's, an, uh, there's a lot going on, and groups coming together down there, and I really appreciate that. The one thing that is kind of <coughs> drawing a lot of attention mm -hmm. is the, 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 the redoing of Nebraska yes. Avenue, yeah. and uh, we had a really nice meeting with uh, Mona from Public Works mm -hmm. this a couple of weeks ago, and um, with the community representatives talking a little bit about um, the trail being incorporated into the Nebraska Avenue mm -hmm. project. So I think that's something that's being looked at again. I, tr I challenged staff and to, to find me another place where they actually the trail actually goes in front of people's homes. Mm -hmm. um, there's not many of them out there, not many of the spurs even that do that. So they're just taking a look at it. There's a lot of attention being uh, given to downtown. Uh, um, so I really appreciate that and appreciate the effort coming forward. So I would support this resolution. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank that, you. I make that thank motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner uh, Scott. Second. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just, uh, just a comment, just wanted to point out here. Um, I just got a notice of a press release from mm -hmm. Secretary of State Cord Bird, uh, who designated Palm Harbor Main Street as the Florida Main Street Program of the Month. Wow, look yeah. at that. So, <laughs> my timing is impeccable. Timing, I mean, it's just perfect. Commissioner right. Eggers, no. all star for no, you. No, it wasn't me. Um, there's a lot of efforts going on <laughs> to improve There's that. a lot of good things going on. Yeah. So that was good. Right. Kudos to Nancy McKibben on that. I do like the way they've done it. Mm -hmm. it Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right, we have a motion and a second. Madam Chair, who was the first? Commissioner Eggers, Eggers. Commissioner Justice was the second. Thank you. Could you please open the voting board? I'm a yes. Yeah, Commissioner Peters is a yes. I'm not open. There it goes. There we go. And Lou, it's not coming up on our little thingy over here, just FYI. Okay. It's, it's, it's coming there because it just you took it over there. Oh, right, but it's not coming over here. <laughs> yes, there 
I did. I did it. I'm show you. I was just trying to help. It's not working because mine just. You can't be up on both, is what the point is. So if you exit that, then you can join. I like to see what's going on. Okay. Okay. Number two. <laughs> 23, we ready? It's like Sister Mark. All right, Thank you. we're ready. Sister All right. Down there. Thank you, Back Mr. on track. Martin. Pinellas Community Foundation recommendation. This is for uh, grant awards for the highest ranked project for the second round of small capital pur purchases funded by the American Rescue Plan Nonprofit Capital uh, Fund Project, $2.25 million. Move approval. Second. All right, it was moved by Commissioner Flowers, second by Commissioner Justice. Madam Chair, may I have a comment, please? Yes, Commissioner Flowers. Um, so I just wanted to say, um, after looking at the list, you know, when it was provided to us, I see some really, really, they're all good. These are all wonderful programs, but I just see some really, really good programs in here um, to fund communities, especially when we're talking about Neighborly Care Network, who provides the transportation for meals to some seniors. Some of those employees are the only other persons some of the seniors may see for that day or for the deliveries. Um, so I'm really excited about that. The Ready for Life um, one, the Ronald McDonald House one, I'm super, super um, excited about. Advantage Village Academy um, for transporting um, persons with disabilities. Um, and then certainly uh, the Vision one, um, because I know a lot of students um, sometimes may have some visual acuity issues. They can't see the board, and so that hinders their um, educational opportunities while they're in school. So all of them on here are really, really good, but I just wanted to pull out um, those few that um, I'm just super excited about. Right yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Anybody else? The, uh, the wrong agenda item is listed on our voting screen. Should be 23. It was six. Oh, ooh. Update oh. to the investment policy, which we yeah. hold. Oh. And I'm a yes. This should be 23. Three. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry, first and second again? Flowers, Justice. There you go. There, oh, there we go. All right, here we Thank go. Thank you. Good catch, Charlie. And I'm a yes. Thank you, Commissioner Peters. Excuse me. Now we are on item 24. Okay, great. Uh, resolution for item number 24. Uh, this is for the West Klosterman Preserve. Um, this is for a county's contribution of $1.5 million. Uh, the requested $3 million that the school board sell in property. What this does is seed the money for them to be able to raise the remaining funds uh, to be able to make this purchase. Move approval. Move approval. Second. Well, somebody second it. It sold out of them. Been a Third move by Commissioner Lapvalis, second by Commissioner Flowers. <laughs> what? Closer. I, I mean, it. yes. And we have a Tex Carter who wishes to be heard. Please come forward. Tex <laughs> Carter wants to say thank you. I'm sorry? Tex Carter wants to say thank you, but I'll go through my little talk. Okay. Okay, I'm Tex Carter. I'm president of the WK Preservation Group. For three years, we've address. been Address? Oh. Address. Address, 1810 Mariner Drive, Tarpon Springs, Florida. It says, say your address right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sorry, okay. It's one it's of those okay. days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And my clock has started. Um, mostly, I, I did want to say thank you. WK Preservation Group started as a small group over three years ago, working to save the West Klosterman Preserve, which is a 14-acre parcel right next to the 76-acre Mariner Point Management Area, clearly part of the same ecosystem. And so we've been really campaigning for a long time, keeping you guys advised of what we were up to, engaging staff when it was appropriate to engage staff. And I think we've done a good job of coming from um, out of the trees and into the public uh, where people really recognize the group. As a matter of fact, this week we were notified that we were nominated as one of the top five environmental groups in Tampa Bay area. So we've really tried Wonderful. to make a difference. One of the things that we do want to continue to make a difference and staff knows this well. We've been working with uh, 
with Paul Kazi, we've been working with the rest of the staff to identify future projects, preservation projects, so that we can help save the small slices of paradise that are out there in different places in Pinellas County nice. and create a public-private partnership that will get people aware, get people excited, and then get staff to help them make their excitement into something that's permanent for the community. And that's really what we work with. I do want to say that the resolution that's in front of you, uh, we worked with uh, Diana Sweeney in re real estate. We worked with Paul Kazi in parks and conservation resources. We got our needs in the resolution, and they were very, very helpful in helping us see how to work with county staff. We want to take the resolution once it's approved, go through the learning experience of negotiating with staff and making sure that we understand how to successfully do this, not just this time, but again in the future, and try to come to that for the people of Pinellas County. I do want to thank a number of the commissioners have actually been out, observed the preserve, have seen the relationship to Mariner's Point, understand what we're about, and I think that uh, getting the resolution going is great. The content of the resolution is wonderful. The commitment by the county is what we really need because we're going back to some donors who have said, what's the county going to do? Okay, and we are going to now be able to say the county has come to bat, the county wants to make this happen, and the county is expecting public-private partnership, and we'll be able to say to some of these larger donors, uh, the county's in, you've got a lot of folks who've given so far, and we'd like to ask you to help us get there for this project, and then again for future projects in other parts of the county that we're going to work with Paul and help identify and then help bring in front of you again. So you may see me again, you may see Kay again, <laughs> okay, uh, because we believe in this and as uh, old folks who've been all over the world, the Pinellas County is a great place to live and to have our grandkids live and we want to have something there for them in the future. Yay, Thank congratulations. <laughs> Thank she you didn't so think much. I could do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for your involvement. Hopefully you can see there's a lot of moving pieces to getting oh, yeah. stuff done. So thank you for your part that you played and that of your whole group. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Commissioner Latbow and then Commissioner Eggers. Uh, before we voted, I and I assume we have the votes and um, I know that you don't talk yourself, uh, you know, out of a vote when you have the votes, but I just wanted to thank Paul uh, for all of his help uh, on this as well as Barry. Um, during my time in Tallahassee, I didn't have a lot of things vetoed, uh, but um, I had this uh, project vetoed not once but twice um, in the same year, which takes a lot of talent. Um, but uh, I thank you all for, and I'm very happy now to serve uh, in a place where, um, as far as I know, um, unless somebody sues us, um, we can't have something vetoed. Um, and uh, I just wanted to thank uh, my colleagues here for um, your hopeful uh, vote on this, as well as the staff. So thank you. Thank you so much for your comments, Commissioner Latvala. I hope you didn't put bad karma out in the universe <laughs> right talking about that nasty word. Commissioner Eggers. Yeah, um, I just really wanted to say uh, first, uh, thank you, Tex and uh, Carter and your team, uh, your lovely wife and the entire group uh, for being so dedicated to a cause. You certainly were a big supporter when Dunedin went through their uh, preserve um, acquisition, um, oh, I guess a year or two ago now, it was fly, two years ago. Wow. But I've had a lot of people tapping me on the shoulder from that area in Dunedin saying uh, the West Klosterman is next up. And I think, um, you know, the, the, the really the residents of this county spoke loud and clear when the penny for Pinellas was approved. A part of that was setting aside funds for acquisition of, since, you know, preserve land, uh, park land, whatever it is, uh, for the residents of this county. And we're about getting close to halfway through, and we're starting to pick up a little steam on some of these projects. They're not all out there just waiting to be bought because people are competing for them, and, 
And so we're working hard to do that, but your group is certainly a model for others to emulate. Uh, and good luck on the fundraising. Uh, if you need any of us to help out, just give me a call. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> yes, Commissioner Flowers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, dittos to everything that was said. Um, I remember when I was on school board, you guys came to our workshop. And um, at that time, we had a developer that wanted the property. And you all brought information related to gopher turtles and all the other different um, animal species that were there. And we were trying to work something out. And so I transitioned over here. So it's really good. And I've received your emails. I've communicated back and whatnot. So it's just really good to see it all come full circle because I know we were then trying to figure out how we could make this work. Um, and so it's just real nice to be on this end where we're able to do something to make it work. Um, the Gladys Doug Douglas property and that whole process really showed us um, just how intrinsic the community was when it came to their thought process um, about preserving land and things of that nature. And so um, I think if you all kind of use some of that blueprint and keep moving forward, you will do that. Um, I can um, I can juggle and I can um, I can probably sing to raise some money, Commissioner Eggers. Um, <laughs> no, not sing. Yeah, I could sing you to raise. Sing. I could sing to raise some money, uh, and uh, I certainly don't mind, you know, asking. Um, so, just thank you all so much for sticking in there because it has been a long time, but you all have been so cordial and congenial through the whole process. You know, n nice. never a negative nice. conversation that I ever had. It was always, a, let's come to a conclusion as it relates to how we can do what we can do, and it's gonna take some time. So I wanna thank you all for that, because sometimes it doesn't always work that way. But thank you so very much, and um, I'll be voting, you know, on the affirmative when we get to that point. But just wanted to, to share that. It does make <coughs> my heart feel good to know from way back then to right now where we are, so thank you. Yeah. Okay, and um, members, just be patient. One more moment, because Commissioner Eggers well, is just burning with desire no, to say I, something else. <laughs> no, I just, I wanted, you, you brought it up, Commissioner Flowers, and I think it really takes, um, we need to make a special thank you to the school board because <laughs> they did set this aside for a long time, <coughs> mm -hmm. right. waiting for the for folks this to, to work come out. through. Mm -hmm. and it, and it, in a time when money is important to the school board, it mm -hmm. could have been an easy sale and and moved on. And yet they were very patient and worked very closely. So thank you for bringing that yeah, up. They, reminding me. We needed the money, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner, because that was nice. Okay, on to Madam Chair, we need a vote for that. We had a first and second. Oh, that's right. Could you please open the voting board, please? Thank you. I'm a yes. Commissioner Peters is a yes, and that is unanimous. Thank you every much, ever so much, everyone. All right, now we are on number 25. This is a warrant of bid to preferred materials for the fiscal year 2024 through 2026 county uh, countywide pavement um, preservation program, $21.2 million. Move approval. Second. All right, it's been moved by Commissioner Justice, second by Commissioner Flowers. Uh, please open the board. I'm a yes. Commissioner Peters is a yes. Number 26. This is a funding agreement between um, Pinellas County, the City of St. Petersburg, and Power Design for the design and construction of new traffic signal at the intersection of Martin Luther King Drive North um, or, and Street North and 116th Avenue, uh, $900,000. Move approval. Been moved by Commissioner Flowers, second by... Second. By, second by Commissioner Justice. Please open the board. I'm a yes. Commissioner Peters is a yes, and that is a unanimous decision. Thank you, everyone. Number 27, Barry. This annual certificate for Lelman Solid Waste Collection Disposal, the non ad valorem assessment, $18 a month. Move approval. Been moved by Commissioner Flowers, second by? Second. Commissioner Scott, please open the voting board. I'm a yes. Commissioner Peters is a yes, and that is a 
Unanimous decision. Thank you. Uh, number 28. It's a word of bid to Archer Western Construction. This is for the South Cross Bayou Advanced Water, Water Reclamation Facility <laughs> Denitrification, Rehabilitation, and Dewater Improvement Project. $26.5 million. Move approval. All right, it's been moved by Commissioner Flowers. Second, Second by Commissioner Justice. Please open the board. The polite way yes. Commissioner Peters is a yes. That is a unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Uh, number 29. Uh, this is a purchase authorization with federal contract for four multi equip generators. Uh, this is for our utilities department. Move approval. Been moved by Commissioner Flowers, second by Commissioner Scott. Uh, please open the board. And I'm a yes. Commissioner Peters is a yes. Unanimous decision. Thank you very much. We are on number 30. Barry. This is the submission of two utility department resilient Florida grant applications to the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. The two projects are designed to reduce risk, natural hazards, as well as increase operational resiliency. This includes re, uh, the utilities building hardening at four locations mm -hmm. and our mobile home um, park water collection system improvements. Move approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Flowers, second by Commissioner Scott. Please open the voting board. And I'm a yes. Commissioner Peters is a yes. That is a unanimous vote. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> Number third, 31, county attorney reports. Under 31, um, I know that Mr. Kroll, who sat in at the work session uh, in my place last week, mentioned to you all a policy um, proposal uh, regarding PACE that's been proposed by Palm Beach County. Uh, it's something that would be going to FAC. I know that they have a policy conference coming up in September. Unfortunately, we just got that during this meeting. Um, so I didn't forward it to you all just because it is a, a one pager. I, I mean, I can summarize it for you all. It is completely in line with all of the conversations that we have had here mm -hmm. regarding PACE. Um, it's submitted by Palm Beach County, who is another one of the litigating counties. Um, there are more and more of us with every passing week um, litigating this issue. Um, we don't have another meeting till, till September 7th. The policy conference is only about a week later. Um, I feel like this is, again, completely in line with our discussions. I can tell you what they are seeking um, is essentially a policy statement that would seek to have the legislature. Apparently, there was a bill pending this year that would have clarified that these entities that are created under Chapter 163 only have the authority to operate within the within the boundaries of a county to such interlocal agreement. Of course, we are not a party to any such local agreement, but we do have the Florida Pace Funding Agency um, operating here. You know, again, we filed suit saying that that's improper. Um, that is the basic legislative statement here, which I do think aligns with every discussion that you all have had here. Um, I can tell you that you know, some of the effects that Palm Beach County uh, has outlined here in support of their position are also in alignment with discussions you all have had. They've cited unnecessary litigation. Of course, we have filed litigation. Um, they're citing, um, you know, th uh, threats to the financial well-being of unsuspecting owners, which we have talked about here. Um, the risk of folks losing their homes because of improvements that they cannot afford. Again, these are all things that we have talked about here. Mm -hmm. um, I will leave it to your discretion whether, you, you're, you're fam whether you're comfortable adopting this statement, which again, it's a one-page statement. We can send it out. Um, but again, the policy is we support the legislature clarifying that these entities can essentially only operate in those counties that have interlocal agreements with the providers. And Don, I know will correct me if I'm not summing this up correctly. Unfortunately, again, we only got this after this meeting started today. Um, you know, again, I think it's completely in alignment. I know that some of you all participate on FAC and we'll see this there. Um, it, again, supports everything we've ever talked about, is in alignment, in, in alignment with the litigation that we have. I will certainly send this out to all of you. Um, but if you wish to vote on that today, I would put it before you. 
Uh, we have a work session at the end of this month. You can't vote on it. You could, by consensus, move it forward. Um, but I suspect we would probably want to express our support to FAC if we are going to do so more, the, more than a week in advance of their meeting. So I'll, I'll put so, it out there for you all for discussion. What are the wishes of the board, Commissioner Scott? Thank you, Madam Chair. I mean, I, I think it's totally in alignment with everyone we've talked mm -hmm. about. I don't see any reason that we should not support it. So I would I would move approval on it. I'll second on that. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Do we need to vote on it? Yes. And I, I yes. And before you take a vote, uh, Madam Chair, I will email this to all of you all. The, so you have it. I will certainly provide a copy to the clerk so that it is part of the record here today. But again, completely in alignment with every discussion this board has ever had. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Please open the voting board. Thank you. Commissioner Peters. I'm a yes. Commissioner Peters is a yes. And that is a unanimous decision. All right. County Administrator. Uh, Commissioners, a little over two years ago, you provided extra funding to keep our level or to raise our level of service for our sidewalks. If you recall those discussions, we've come back and given you interim updates. Well, we just undertook a video to really highlight the work that the crews have done. So our crews completed over 580 repairs throughout the county, all ahead of the deadline that we had set for them for two years. I just want to thank our crews who worked tirelessly to get this work done to improve our sidewalks. And you can see through the video um, the pride that they took in raising that level of service for our residents. And so at this point, I'd just like to show the video. Thank you. Play the video, Pete. With new funding allocated by the Board of County Commissioners, a Pinellas County Public Works team was given two years to complete 587 sidewalk repairs all while keeping up with new requests. Could they do it? Being in the heat, it's been a kind of challenging, especially with the summer, like the heat coming up, but you know, you just gotta persevere and just keep going. Well, I definitely go home at night and I tell my wife about it. So it makes me feel great. We were um, fortunate enough to get some funding from the, the county commission and we actually added two crews on to serve the citizens a little bit better. And uh, I think we've done a really good job with being efficient, using the money wisely. With the age and deterioration of our sidewalks, the lifts from, from tree roots and other damage, we needed to accelerate our maintenance to ensure that the sidewalks are safe. Counting new requests, the crews completed 1,161 service requests. That's 14 miles of smooth sidewalk, and they finished two months early. Part of the reason the project was finished ahead of time, I believe, sincerely, is because of the stellar crew we have at the moment. It's not only for just the people that are walking, but it's also for the people that are on the bicycles, people that are riding scooters and stuff like that. And basically, we're just out here just taking care of that, grinding those down, removing those panels that are cracked, replacing them and making it safe for everybody here in the county. I tell people we have enough sidewalks in Pinellas County to go from here to New York City. And there's so many things that can disrupt the sidewalks, you know. Um, so we've got a lot going on and trying to keep them maintained you know, like I said, with, with all the, uh, that large asset that we have to keep it uh, up to standards has been quite a challenge. So, uh, and, our, and like I say, our crews have done a great job with that challenge. Smoother sidewalks for everyone. Nice job, Pinellas County Public Works. So as you can see, I mean, the funding that you provided was put to good use. Um, we're now able to sustain that and keep up with that backlog um, to where we don't get behind like that in the future. And again, I just want to thank the crews that worked so hard. And you can see from just the video the pride that they took in doing that. And uh, again, just wanted to show the highlights. And we appreciate the video that communications put together highlighting their work. Well, and I would just like to say be on behalf of all of us, Kelly, if you would please extend a special thank you uh, appreciation to all of the staff that we just saw on the video it was so clear that they took such a tremendous amount of pride in the work that they were doing i was particularly struck in how neat they kept everything around the sidewalk and i know that that's not easy and to be doing it in the kind of heat that we have experienced this summer is a great testament to their dedication and loyalty to Pinellas County and its citizens. So I hope you'll share that with them. It means a lot to all of us. Because it's easy to take these kind of things for granted, but behind it, there's an awful lot of work that goes on. Thank you to the communications team for capturing it so beautifully. Thank you. Agreed. 
That concludes my report. Okay. And now we're on to County Commission new business. And Commissioner Latvala, do you have anything new to report? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to give a um, brief shout out and thank you uh, to Alex Toole. He was uh, he interned in my office this summer and did a great job. He is a student at Eckerd College. So I wanted to tell him thank you and also good luck this year at school. I also wanted to thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Long, as well as uh, Commissioner Eggers for attending the Lila Goody Foundation fundraiser last week at Chick-fil-A um, up in Countryside. It was a uh, resounding success. Um, and last meeting, you asked me about the uh, two service dogs that the foundation uh, will be uh, helping um, and I did my homework um, like a good commissioner will do when the chair gives out homework. And it is a lab and a golden retriever. Oh, um, Belle and Millie. Um, <laughs> and uh, I also toured uh, HEP um, the other day and saw the great work that they are doing in Clearwater and in um, Pinellas County. And I wanted to also give uh, congratulations to uh, Jeff Parrish, uh, Indian Rocks uh, Baptist uh, pastor who retired after 16 years of ministry there and wanted to uh, give best wishes to their new pastor, uh, Aaron uh, Philippone. And that concludes my new business. Very nice. Thank you so much. Commissioner Eggers. Yeah. Um, well, first, um, I just wanted to say that I was, I was able to attend the Dunedin Purple Heart Ceremony, and there was a... Um, a man that had been killed in World War II and for one reason or another had never received his Purple Heart. So the Purple Heart oh, no. group there actually presented it posthumously, posthumously to his sister. Mm. Um, and it was really an emotional time and just an exciting night uh, to, uh, to really center the whole event around. So I really wanted to commend the uh, Dunedin Purple Heart Committee for pulling it, putting that together. I also wanted to thank Commissioner Latvala on the Lila Good fu the fundraiser for Lila Good. It was great. It was just a wonderful event. It was packed. Um, and, uh, Standing just, room only. Yeah, just hearing. Because people knew y'all were coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So, so um, but the parents were just, they're, they're just yeah. so much delight, delight in their eyes. And they were so excited to see the people there and tell the stories about Lila and and just it was just wonderful evening and um, the, the dogs are going to be a, a welcome uh, addition to the to the team I, I volunteered my dog but too much excitement and too much energy and there's no way they would accept that dog but um, the, the spirit is there to help kids for sure um, I too uh, on the in the uh, spirit of talking about those retiring I wanted to congratulate uh, Gene Coppola, who was the Palm Harbor di director, the library director, uh, on an incredible career um, for the residents of uh, Palm Harbor. Uh, and he has officially retired and moving on to the next phase of his life. So congratulations, Gene. Uh, job, job well done. Um, congratulations to there's new, new Italian ice uh, facility, Rita's, right? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, up in, uh, in Commissioner Latval and I went up on Saturday had a ribbon cutting for it, all a family event. The place was packed, um, and it was a, a really nice, a nice, a nice event. Just to get another business underway in Palm Harbor, and that 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 center that had kind of been kind of gone downhill is just totally revitalized. There's only one or two empty spots up there. So, again, good good for small business in Palm Harbor. Um, CRC starts tomorrow night. Uh, again, thank you for allowing me to represent you on that board. And um, I guess Dunedin's going to do a decommissioning of their, of their old city hall coming up soon. And uh, um, I certainly will support that effort. Um, and um, just so you know, we've talked on uh, my last thing uh, the, about budgets and all of that. And I will tell you, if you go on to Palm Harbor Happenings and you see the hundreds of people that are commenting on the difficulty that folks are experiencing it is real, and it is it is just really tough time. And um, I I've been out trying to get my walking in again. And I've had two people stop me, 
about Dunedin taxes. And I said, well, I don't have anything to do with that one. Um, but but then they go on and talk about the pressures that, 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 that their families are feeling. Um, it's not just about property taxes. It's about insurance. And clearly the number one thing for our representatives going up north would be to get that insurance thing under wraps. And that's easier said than done. But that's clearly a big, expensive item. So that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Scott? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so about, uh, I don't know, 10 days ago, I had an opportunity to uh, tour the ATA hosp hospital on um, Indian Rocks Road. Um, the retreat at Largo Med West, it's called, which uh, provides um, mental health services to our first responders. And it was really, um, it was really a very interesting um, tour, and uh, and what they do there is is really some great, amazing things for our first responders. So I really appreciated the opportunity uh, to do that, and also want to thank uh, Fire Chief uh, Jim Milliken and uh, all the guys at the Wellman Fire Department uh, for allowing me to tag along with them for an afternoon and an evening um, about two weeks ago and do a ride along and um, see what they do and how they do it. And uh, and also they really know how to make some great ribeyes, I have to say. So it was, um, <laughs> that was a, that was a good opportunity. Uh, this morning I had an opportunity to do a tour of the medical examiner's office, and I was very very grateful that there were no autopsies going on when I walked through. Um, but uh, that was a good good experience. And I also just want to give a shout out and a big thank you to uh, Louise Getz in Palm Harbor just for all of the hard work that she's put into getting the. Main Street uh, program revived there in, in downtown Palm Harbor. She's really worked her tail off. And, and uh, that um, press release today from uh, Secretary of State was just perfect timing when we were voting on uh, the Palm Harbor parking plan. So, so just thank her for that. And um, that's all I have, Madam Chair. Commissioner Flowers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I want to say that for May 8th and 10th, please note your calendars of next year. The Resiliency Sustainability Conference will be held again at the Hilton, same location as it was this year. Um, of course, sponsored by the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council, so hopefully you'll be able to make either all or a portion of it. We're still working on speakers and all of that, but we have those dates set aside, so please mark your calendars. Um, thank you, uh, Barry, for giving the update on the grant that will be submitted for the hardening um, of our stormwater um, areas. We talked about that at the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council uh, meeting on yesterday and several other uh, communities will be applying for those dollars as well, so um, they're on the lookout <laughs> for us. Um, 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 Commissioner Long, I was told to share with you that the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council conference room is now um, fully up to date with technology to include the, the microphones and all in the ceiling. And Sean said he thought that you would be very well pleased, and that would bring a smile to your face because he Absolutely said you championed. Absolutely would, because it's been horrible. Yeah. <coughs> he said and you championed. We had our, I'll tell you about that, but we had a, the police standards meeting was um, in that room this last week, and it was a lot better than it usually would have been. So He said you championed the technology updates. <coughs> um, and just an FYI, that meeting room is available to any um, elected government system. So if you're having a meeting or something and you want to, uh, you need that type of space and maybe in that location area, it, it, you are not charged for utilizing the space. You just have to make contact with them to schedule it and to make sure no one else is um, meeting there. We established or reestablished our resilience resiliency uh, planning committee so that we can take on additional information related to efforts that are moving forward, not just in our county, but in other counties, um, so that we can try um, to be uh, on top of a lot of things um, that are going on related to resiliency and sustainability. Um, and one of those was a, a presentation um, regarding our seagrasses. Um, around our coastal areas in Old Tampa Bay, New Tampa Bay, and throughout. So we had a wonderful presentation by Echosphere um, that showed us where some of the uh, seagrasses have just been completely uh, done away with and how they are attempting to replant um, seagrasses in those areas. They've received a grant to take care of that. Um, what's slowing them up is they have to get a permit to replant seagrasses in areas where seagrass was. So that's what's slowing them down, but they're moving forward on that. Um, there is a Florida automated 
Vehicle Summit that will occur September 6th and 8th. I think you'll like this one. Um, and the president of FAV is former Senator Brandy's. Um, and that mm -hmm, it's going to be at the Marriott in Tampa. And the entire summit uh, is about automated vehicles and transportation services. So I think that'll be really good. Um, if you haven't received that email, I'm happy to forward it to you with the link where you can register to attend that um, conference. What's the date again, Commissioner? September 6th, 7th and 8th. Thank we you. have a work session over one of those days. Yeah, we do. We got mm -hmm. our public hearing on the seventh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I'm just sharing the information. Yeah. Um, yeah, because automated vehicles are really coming around. And as a matter of fact, I attended the um, past president's um, dinner and luncheon for the Florida Association of Counties. Um, and one of the counties in South Florida um, has gone to utilizing automated vehicles. Um, and they seem to be working very well with them. So it's something that's really on the move. Um, we welcomed um, new members to the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. Um, uh, Ward uh, Frizzolowski was welcomed to um, the committee. So we're very glad to have him on board. Alan Clendenning, representing Tampa, glad to have him on board. Chris Merz, representing Safety Harbor, and Anna Marie Brooks. And I'm sorry, I did not get the, the city that she's representing, but those are the three new members um, that are there. The former um, chair of the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council did step down, not just from of uh, the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council, but also from serving as commissioner in Sarasota due to some personal concerns that were going on with their family. And so Mayor Woody Brown from the city of Largo is serving as the interim chair until we have our actual elections in September. Um, the, the position of secretary treasurer will remain the same. Um, and um, just a few numbers if you're interested as it relates to our Resiliency and Sustainability Conference um, earlier this year. There were 350 attendees. We um, take, took in about $239,000. There were 80 media stories on, on primetime media related to the conference. Um, and we took in about $170,000 in sponsorship from 27 entities. So we're, we broke even, nothing in the red, and we look forward to seeing you guys next year. That's it for moi. Very, <clears throat> very good, and I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do you know if they have added heat, the heat index, into their formula for the way in which it affects not only human beings working outside, but for example, the sea grasses? Um, there's a PowerPoint, and that heat index information is in there. If you would like, I will be happy to share that with you from Ecosphere that provided the presentation. Um, I think it goes all the way back to 2004, 2006, so you can see those trends up through um, 2023. Um, but I can give you the, it, it was like 20-something slides. So I can send that to you so that you can see what all of that data is. Well, I think it might be important for all of us on the county commission to see that. Okay. Uh, maybe that. at a workshop, Barry, because it directly impacts, for example, the way in which we look at our beaches. Mm -hmm. for, exa for example, you might remember at the last um, seminar during the Resiliency Summit, there was that world-renowned mm -hmm. uh, uh, geologist that spoke to us about mm -hmm. the coastline and the coast and the way it's changing. All of that needs to be taken into consideration when we start talking about our beach renourishment plans. Okay. Okay, I'll Commissioner Justice. Share that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a few things. Uh, uh, last week, I spent the day in Dunedin. We had the Amer uh, Area Agency on Aging of Pasco Pinellas uh, annual public hearing to take public input on our long range plan. That was at the Dunedin Library. I met with uh, Commissioner Jeff Gow. Uh, on some local Dunedin issues, as well as getting a tour of their new city hall and making a list of some things to do and not do, uh, mm -hmm. should we get to a point of having a facility discussion here. Um, and then it was able to attend the Purple Heart ceremony that night and was a, a very uh, powerful ceremony to be part of. So appreciate being invited to that. Uh, toward the St. Pete Free Clinic with their staff, uh, there are three locations. They're 
uh, distribution site in Lelman, their uh, um, site down in downtown St. Petersburg, and then their new site in South St. Pete, uh, which the ARPA funding will help build out and really provide a great resource for them to be able to do the, the good work that they're continuing to do. Um, and then I thought I had something else. Then I, I want to extend our deepest condolences to the family, friends, and uh, former colleagues of Dave Healy, who was the longtime executive director of the Pinellas Planning Council uh, for a long time, was the voice uh, on any kind of land use and planning that happened in Pinellas County. So uh, we appreciate his work over the years. And then um, on a lighter note, want to wish a happy birthday to our good friend and former colleague, Mayor Ken Welch. Very nice. <laughs> okay, um, my turn. So I have some interesting things to report uh, from Forward Pinellas. Commissioner Eggers already knows this, but we had our emergency meeting to decide the new apportionment makeup of the Pin Forward Pinellas Board, and it's been decided the board will expand from its current configuration of 13 members to having 19 members next year. After reviewing all the possible alternatives, this one seems to be in line with the current 2020 census. It gives us a better makeup of people from our organization going forward with the hopes of transitioning to a regional MPO. I was so proud of Commissioner Eggers because it was his proposal that we all ended up voting for. So congratulations to you and your leadership, Commissioner. We met with City of Clearwater Council Member David Albritton, as well as Whit, Tina, Chelsea, and other members of the Forward Pinellas staff at the trail crossing at Skinner Boulevard beside Eli's Barbecue in downtown Dunedin. We all took part in handing out free bike bells, reflectors, and educational materials for both adults as well as children. There were several media members present as well, and it was a terrific opportunity to expose the public to all the great work that Forward Pinellas and Pinellas County are doing and continue to do to improve transportation in this area. We also had the opportunity of guests, as guest of St. Pete Police Chief Tony Holloway and Sheriff Gualteri to attend one of the Poli Pinellas Police Standards Council meetings and learn all about the work they are doing with the state to collect more accurate data on crime and the use of force. The sheriff made it a point to say that you can't make the best decisions for your county without good data. And the importance of data collection, we are among a handful of states that are behind in this area, and it's even affecting the FBI and their investigations across the state and the county. We had a very interesting tour of the historic Palladium Theater in downtown St. Pete, and it was really interesting to learn more about what they're doing and what makes them so special. Unlike, unlike the larger theaters like Mahaffey and Ruth Eckerd, the Palladium focuses on local talent and acts, during, turning community members into homegrown international stars. The performers truly feel like it is home whenever they perform there. And it's one of the last places in this area when you can see world-class entertainment at a very affordable cost. I met with and talked about the direct payment program to pull down Medicaid dollars as part of the local providers participation <coughs> fund, uh, Kathy Gillette, who works with All Children's Hospital. Children's hospitals are 70% Medicaid funding and don't have a wide net of patients because they only serve children. So they're very limited on their revenue streams. I'm very sad to report to you that because of a few holdouts, it looks like they'll have to revisit the idea next <coughs> year. Hopefully, it is a shame. Hopefully they'll come to fruition and all agree what's in the best interest of, of our kids um, next year. I'd like to also congratulate Commissioner Flowers' reappointment to the PSDA Board of Directors, which is set to expire at the end of September, and I would like to reappoint her to continue serving on that board if it meets with all of your agreement, and hopefully you will. Um, we also met, you'll be so happy to hear this, I hope, 
We met with the Mayor's Council Executive Committee yesterday afternoon, and Mayor Welch, along with the rest of the committee, very much wants the County Commission to continue being a part of the meetings, and they have decided to lower the dues for next year to the minimum of the new dues structure based on, a popu on population for us at $500. So I thought that would be something you might all agree on. And um, I also want to congratulate PSTA on the fabulous award that they received from APTA that uh, designates them as the number one transit system in America. That's a pretty prestigious award to receive, in my opinion. Um, and uh, Commissioner Peters, do you have new business that you'd like to discuss with the rest of the commission? Um, I just want to do a shout out, uh, belated happy birthday to the U.S. Coast Guard. Um, Pinellas County is home to more than 600 Coast Guard men and women. Um, we have four Coast Guard stations. Many people don't know that we have four stations in Pinellas County. We have, uh, of course, the one at Sand Key that's Marine. We have, of course, have Air Station Clearwater. Um, we also have Sector St. Petersburg. Uh, and Sector is like dispatch 911 <coughs> kind of thing. Um, and then the uh, Coast Guard Reserves is also, they're located right next to Air Station. Um, and every year I take them birthday cakes to celebrate <laughs> to celebrate the U.S. Coast Guard's birthday. And this year was no exception. And I delivered cakes to every station and, um, and talked to each of the COs about issues that they have here in Pinellas County. Housing is the number one because the stipend that they get from the federal government is not high enough to house our Coast Guard men and women when they get stationed here. Um, and... Um, I also I help them with an event they'll be doing on September 8th called the Climb, um, where first responders and the Coast Guard and military personnel will be climbing this, the uh, bleachers at the Rowdy Stadium, um, and they climb to the same height that the firefighters climb to in the burning buildings on the Twin Towers on 9-11, and that's a celebration that they do to honor and remember okay. those heroes, heroes that died. <laughs> And um, so they, we had good conversations with the COs. There's a couple of things that we're working on with them um, to help them feel more at home here in Pinellas County and, and get them connected to the community better. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Scott. Yes, ma'am. Did you suit up with the firefighters? I did. Uh, no. I just thought I'd check because that's a whole new experience right there. If you didn't have all the bunker gear and the hazmat stuff on. <clears throat> no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, not this time. You was eating steaks. Right. I was too busy eating steaks. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, but, um, but that is on my list. I will. So. Be careful what you commit you, to. Yeah. That's, that's it as well. Well, well, you know, I'm a... Uh, you know, I'm I'm a jump in the deep end and start swimming kind of guy, so I will do it. Uh -huh. You okay. can always do fire ops. Right. Sure. Almost didn't Make sure you. there's someone there to give you resuscitation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And Madam yeah. Chair, if I can make another suggestion, I know that you all all nodded in consensus to reappointing Commissioner Flowers to PSTA. The, the clerk and I were chatting down here, and I think that I, we rec I, that I would recommend you go ahead and take a formal vote on that. Move like to make uh, oh, a second. second. <laughs> Okay. We been, like to make a second. <laughs> so it's been moved yeah. and Commissioner Eggers motioned and Commissioner Latvalis seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Anything else for the good of the order? Anybody? Kathleen? Hello. All good. Okay, <laughs> good. All good. All right, we are good, and we are now adjourned until 6 o'clock. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, I can go do some homework. Thank yep, you. me too.
Good afternoon, everyone, or early evening, as the hour portends. Uh, welcome back to our public hearing this evening. And we are ready to start with item number 34. Barry? Over to the clerk. Sarah Lynn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Agenda item number 34 is the second of two public hearings to consider a proposed ordinance amending the countywide plan. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received by the clerk and the matter is properly before the authority to be heard. Thank you. What are the wishes of the board? Members? Move approval. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Eggers, second by Commissioner Scott. Could you open the voting board, please? And I'm a yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Peters is voting yes. I don't have. There you go. It worked. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that is a unanimous vote. Thank you, everyone. Number 35, human rights. Agenda item number 35 is a proposed ordinance amending Pinellas County Code Chapter 70, Article 5, relating to the County Council for Persons with Disabilities, providing alternates for non-board appointed members, providing for a lower quorum, and providing for an effective date. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received by the clerk and the matter is properly before the authority to be heard. All right. Is there any discussion among the members? Move approval. Second. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Justice, seconded by Commissioner Scott. Please open the voting board. And I'm a yes, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Peters. And that is a unanimous uh, vote for in the positive. Thank you. And number 38. Agenda item number 36 is case number LDR 22-01. This is the first of two public hearings to consider a proposed ordinance amending Chapter 134, General and Administrative Provisions, Chapter 138, Zoning, Chapter 154, Site Development, Right-of-Way Improvements, Subdivisions, and Platting, and Chapter 158, Floodplain Management of the Pinellas County Land Development Code. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received by the clerk. The matter is properly before the board to be heard. All right. Is there any discussion? This is the first of two first, public hearings. First, first mm -hmm. public hearings. Okay. Do we have anyone from the audience that wishes to speak? Madam Clerk? One thing I would like to comment, I know that um, staff from the county attorney's office has been working um, with staff in the department to make sure that we're compliant with Senate Bill 250 that was adopted by the legislature. Um, some of you all may be familiar, this is the statute that was passed in relation to some of the hurricanes that hit mm -hmm. the state of Florida last year. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, we fall within the 100 mile radius established um, in regard to those storms that provide that until October of next year, and it's retroactive to last year, you can't impose any more stringent or burdensome requirements on those wishing to develop land. So I know that we've gotten with staff and we do have a proposal to remove um, a provision that's related to the site plan pre-application process. We felt like that would add the burdensome step. So that is something that we're recommending. I know this is the first hearing of two. Um, just so you all are aware, that's a recommendation and we'll make sure that that's very clear the next time around. But it is something that we'll be keeping an eye on on any land development regulation coming through until October of next year. And you're going to hear us talk about some additional um, requirements that have been passed and adopted by the legislature that you'll be hearing about with some ordinances. And, and the reason why we're recommending it, the language in the statute, all of your ordinances come through with a severability clause. However, in abundance of caution, we're recommending that this provision just come out because the legislation stated that the ordinance was void ab initio. So we were concerned that could relate to the whole ordinance uh, if litigated. So again, something that we can adopt next <coughs> October and right. just going to be recommending that comes out. Well, perfect. And I do believe I saw Mr. Crowell get ready to stand up. Did you have anything to add, Don? Attorney's mm -hmm. office, just that it's the red line option two reflects that within your board agenda package. 
Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Anyone? <clears throat> what are the wishes? This is the first of you two. Have to vote. So you're just ta you're taking public comment and uh, authorizing transmittal. Do we have any public comment, Madam <clears throat> Clerk? No, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on to item 37. And the item number 37 is case number LDR 2223-02. This is the first of two public hearings to propose an ordinance amending Chapter 138, Zoning of the Pinellas County Land Development Code, providing revised authority and meeting notice procedures for the Development Review Committee. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received by the clerk and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. Committee commissioners, this is the first of two public hearings. This is the companion piece to the other item that we discussed at our work session. All right. Is there any public comment, Madam Clerk? No, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you. Any comments from the board? Not right now. No? All right. Then we are ready to move to item 38. Agenda item number 38 is a petition submitted by Arthur M. Vinson and Evelyn Washer to vacate the 40-foot right-of-way of, of Anclo Boulevard per Platt also known as Riverside Avenue, lying southwesterly of and adjacent to lots 25 through 28, 1298 Riverside Avenue, and 1275 Mickler Lane, Gladys Mickler's Resubdivision Plath Book 5, page 72, lying in section 032715, Pinellas County, Florida. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. Letters of no objection have been received, and one letter in support has been received by the clerk. The matter is properly before the board to be heard. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And we do have one comment or um, applicant. The applicant would like to speak. Mr. Ox, would you like to come forward now? Only if there are any questions, Madam I'm sorry? Only if there's questions. Only if there's questions. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? No. No? Move, move approval. Second. All right, it's been moved by Commissioner Eggers, second by Commissioner Flowers. Uh, let's have the vote of the board. Commissioner Peters, do you have any input? Uh, no, I'm just going to be a yes. Thank you. Who is, okay, that is unanimous in support. Thank you very much. Thank, nice to see you, Brian. Thank you, uh, number 39. Agenda item number 39 is a petition submitted by Brenda Bond to vacate a portion of the right-of-way known as San Marino Boulevard lying adjacent to the westerly boundary of Lot 1, 10900 Gandhi Boulevard North, Block 3, Florida Riviera, Section D, Plat Number 5, Plat Book 17, Page 37, lying in Section 173017, Pinellas County, Florida. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. Letters of no objection have been received. No correspondence has been received by the clerk and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there any comments or the commissioners? Nobody? Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this issue? Anybody? No? All right. Commissioners, what is the will? Move approval. I'll second. Been moved by Commissioner Flowers, second by Commissioner Scott. May we have the voting card, please? I'm a yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Peters is a yes. All right, and now we are on item 40. Agenda item number 40 is a petition submitted by Hawkins Family Partnership, LLC, to vacate a 16-foot platted alley lying north of Lot 23, <coughs> and the east half of lot 22 and lying south of lot 10 and the east half of lot 11 and a 16 foot public alley easement lying within the east 1.5 feet of lot 22 and the west 14.5 feet of lot 23 block 4 first section Lelman Heights plat book 14 page 15 lying in section 331 16 Pinellas County Florida the public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing Letters of no objection were received and no correspondence has been received by the clerk. The matter is properly before the board to be heard. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Madam Chair. Ma Commissioner Flowers. Should that be Lelman, L-E-L-L-M-A-N, or should it be Lelman, L-E-A-L? It should be L-L? -L? Oh, okay. All right. I'm just asking. Come on up. For clarification, I assume. Yes. Uh, Michael Schroederbach, Building Development Review Services. 
That is correct. That's the plat name. <laughs> it's, it's spelled correctly on there. Thank, Thank you. you. Move approval. Thank you. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Latvala, second by Justice. Commissioner, oh, mm -hmm. did I mix mm -hmm. that up? Mm -hmm. We look very much alike. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you two. It was Commissioner Justice and me. Justice and Flowers. Okay, Commissioner Justice and Commissioner Flowers, could you please open the voting card? Commissioner Peters, you're there, right? Yes, and I'll, have, I'll be a yes on that. Thank you. And Commissioner Peters is a yes for the record. Um, item 41. Thank you, Madam Chair. Agenda item number 41 is case number ZON2304. This is a request by Pinellas County Baywood Hotels for a zoning change from employment to and general retail and services to general retail and services transient accommodation overlay, 2.78 acres, and from employment to to general retail and services, 0.74 acre, with a development agreement as required by the transient accommodation overlay on the transient accommodation overlay portion of the subject property allowing a hotel and its customer accessory uses that comply with the building density, intensity, and height allowed by the property's land use and zoning designations on approximately 3.52 acres located near the northeast corner of Roosevelt Boulevard and Ulmerton Road, adjacent to the west of 4011 Ulmerton Road in unincorporated Pinellas Park. Since this is a quasi-judicial hearing, all those individuals who plan to speak on this item must be sworn in. For those wishing to speak, whether you are attending in person or virtually, if able, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Say, say I do. Thank you. Public hearing was properly advertised. Affidavit publication has been received um, for filing. No correspondence has been received by the clerk. The matter is properly before the board to be heard. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there any questions or comments from the board? No? I wouldn't mind just seeing the presentation quick if they wouldn't. Commissioner Scott would like to see the presentation. Fine. Thank you. Good evening, Glenn Bailey, zoning manager. Good so, evening, Glenn. Hi. So the subject property in this case is 3.52 acres near the northeast corner of Roosevelt Boulevard and Almerton Road. It's near the, um, the International Airport there. The uh, future land use map is commercial general employment. There's no change to the future land use map proposed. The zoning analysis amendment has two parts. It's from employment to and general retail and services to general retail and services transit accommodation overlay. So it would have an overlay on it to give it um, additional density for hotel rooms. Um, that's on 2.78 acres. And from E2 to C2, without the overlay on 0.74 acres, existing use is vacant, proposed use is a hotel. You can see the subject property. The part outlined in green is a part that's covered by the, uh, the transit accommodation overlay where the hotel parcel would go. The various other parcels in blue are basically just clean up to make everything underneath consistently C2 zoning. So it's a clean up thing for the 0.74 acres. You can see the airport to the north. The Cracker Barrel restaurant is to the, to the east and there's various hotels and retail employment uses in the vicinity of this. You see Almerton Road going north, going east-west, and then Roosevelt going to the north there. You see the zoning atlas on the left. You can see it's a mixture of the C2 and the red and the E2 and the maroon colors. And on the right would be going to that, the hashed lot area there would be the, um, the C2 overlay where the hotel parcel lives and the rest you can see is going to the what, all, what the rest of the parcels are in the area, uh, basically the red, the C2 red. You can see the subject property from Ormerton Road. It's, um, as you can tell, it's vacant. And the development agreement tied to this is required by the code. It's required by the CT overlay, the transit accommodation overlay, in exchange for hotel density and intensity bonuses. Um, specifically, this development agreement allows up to 132 room six-story hotel and accessory uses. It's approximately 48 units per acre, where 40 is a normal maximum in the C2 zoning district. So in order to get those eight more units per acre, they had to go through this the C2 overlay. Mm -hmm. It also requires compliance with local hurricane evacuation plans, requires transportation analysis, and basically the development agreement says it cannot convert these hotel units into permanent residences, which is important. This is in the coastal hazard area. And 
And also it has design considerations for compatibility with surrounding uses. In this case, there are really no residential uses anywhere near this, so the compatibility is not really a concern. Some additional information, and the development agreement only applies to that 2.78 acre hotel parcel, and the other amendment areas are cleanup to bring the entire subject property on the same underlying zoning district, which is C2. Submitted traffic analysis indicates acceptable impacts, and again, the area is a mix of commercial and employment uses dominated by the nearby international airport. You can see the concept plan tied to the development agreement. Again, the, the hotel parcel is in green, and it shows you the the proposed uh, location of the hotel and its parking surrounding it. And the access road is off 40th Street North. That's the same access that's currently there for the Cracker Barrel restaurant. It would just extend to the north. So there'd be no more additional connections to Almerton Road itself. And here's an example photo. This is something like the hotel would look like. Again, this is required by the CTO LA, the development agreement, so that's why it's in here. And again, recommendation is to propose zoning amendment development agreement that would provide a lodging amenity close to the, to the international airport. Development agreement gives assurances that potential impacts are mitigated and area compatibility is addressed. Traffic impacts are in, in, within acceptable parameters. And we feel it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. And the DRC staff recommends approval and the LPA recommended approval uh, unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Should, Commissioner Eggers has a just, question. Just a quick question. On the uh, 40th Street North, how do you access that uh, going east and west on Almerton? Does it, if you're going east on Almerton, how do you get to that 40th Street? Do you have to come down and do a U-turn? I believe it's a ride in, ride out. Mm -hmm. You do. Right in, mm -hmm. right. right in, the right out. The applicant can answer that for okay. sure, but I believe it's a ride in, right out. So that's the only mm -hmm. access Correct. to the hotel. There's nothing else on that corner. Okay. That. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? From the commissioners, Brian? Uh, move approval, Madam Chair. Second. <laughs> and moved by Commissioner Scott, second by Commissioner <coughs> Commissioner Peters, are you with us? I am, and I would be voting uh, yes on that if we're taking the vote now. Okay, fine. Thank you very much, everyone. Please take your vote. And who's missing? Um, Somebody's missing. Scott. I'm a yes. Commissioner Scott is a yes. Okay, that's a unanimous approval. Yeah. Commissioner, uh, Katie, did you wish to say anything? I meant to recognize you. I so apologize. Please come forward. It's so lovely to see you nice here. Nice to see you too. And no, Madam Chair, only as needed to answer questions, which staff did well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, number 42. Agenda item number 42 is a proposed ordinance amending the Pinellas County Code by removing the Tenants' Bill of Rights, removing sections 42432, 42433, 42434, 42435, 42436, 42437, and 42438. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received by the clerk, and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. All right. Any comments or questions from the board sadly, members? Sadly, sadly, make a motion to Do we need to explain to everyone what no, this I, I, is doing and why? I would yeah. like to hear that publicly so people can understand. I think that would be very wise. Who wants to address yeah. that? We have been preempted by the state of Florida and this regulation is no longer lawful at the local level mm -hmm. and therefore we are repealing our ordinance. <clears throat> I will second, Madam Chair, if there was no second. No. Yeah, I've made the motion. Commissioner Flowers made a motion. Commissioner Scott uh, seconded it. And under protest, I guess we have no alternative. Yeah. And Madam Chair, just um, for the record, other municipalities that, in fact, mm -hmm. adopted uh, an ordinance similar um, have also been doing the same at their meetings. Um, it's, it's just disappointing, but. It's really just housekeeping. <coughs> housekeeping because of the state, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well then, we've had a motion and a second. Yes, ma'am. And now we have voting card open. Please take your votes. Commissioner Peters, you're with us? Yes, I would be a yes. Okay. That's a unanimous vote. And item number 43. 
Okay. Well, agenda item number 43 is a proposed resolution ordinance approving a one-year extension of the Safety Harbor Community Redevelopment Area and Redevelopment <coughs> Trust Fund. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received by the clerk and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. Can we have a short presentation? Church presentation? Okay. Rebecca? Delay and this while for we're a little waiting while. for her to come up, I just want to reflect that we had not a unanimous vote on that last vote, and Commissioner Justice voted no. Just so you know, to correct the record. Thank you. Oh, good evening, Rebecca Stonefield with Housing and Community Development. I'm here to introduce um, the the application to provide a one-year extension for the Safety, Har Safety Harbor Community Redevelopment Area and the associated trust fund with the CRA. Uh, the original uh, CRA was founded in 1992. The CRA and Trust Fund were established as a 30-year term. Uh, it was set to expire October 6th of 2023, and at that time, uh, the board approved a one-year extension so the city could uh, update the community redevelopment plan. Ultimately, they, they would be seeking a 10-year extension, but wanted that one year to, to work on the plan and the update. The original TIF contribution from the county was established as 95% when the CRA was first uh, created. And as part of that extension, uh, it was established at a 50% rate for county contribution. Uh, the city has been working on updating their plan and is requesting the extension for another year to finalize some of the information in the plan. Through 2023, county TIF uh, contribution has totaled over six million. Um, so if this one year is granted, the, they will come back uh, with an extension of eight years. So uh, we are here to um, request that extension, um, and this is to prevent the CRA from sunsetting uh, on October 6th of this year. And again, um, it'll allow time for the city to provide additional information in their plan. Uh, the City Commission would rehear the plan amendment uh, by the second quarter of 2024, and then it would come back to the board uh, once with that eight-year extension request. Uh, so if this is approved, we will continue to coordinate with the city uh, to ensure that the information uh, is in the plan uh, as necessary, and then we will come back with a formal recommendation to the board for the eight-year extension. Question. Commissioner Eggers. Yeah, so just for clarification, yes. the 30 year CRA expired in 22. Yes, so and one year extension goes through 23. Correct. And the, since they, it may happen sometime in the following year, you're asking for another one year extension, but in no way is it going to be more than an additional years. 10 additional years. Effect. That, yeah. Correct. So. And just to clarify, the, the, uh, the original CRA didn't sunset because of the extension, so it's the uh, uh, yeah. initial CRA plan that is under yeah. Yeah. the I extension. So it's, yeah, I got you. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the so Commissioner so Flowers? On slide three, it says CRA plan to request an additional extension of nine years. Should it be nine years or eight years? It, it, it would be eight years because okay. of the second extension. So just a correction on that. Yes, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Move approval. Second. And moved by Commissioner Egger, second by Commissioner <coughs> Flowers. Please open the voting card. 25 minutes, Matt. That wasn't bad. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'll be a yes. <laughs> no, it's a vote. Commissioner Peters is a yes, so that's a unanimous <laughs> vote. All right. <laughs> Item number 44. Agenda item number 44 is a proposed ordinance amending the Pinellas County Code Chapter 122 related to the county towing ordinance. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. One letter of concern has been received by the clerk and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. All right. Uh, do we have any comments from the commissioners? Any questions? Move approval. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have a couple members of the com community that wish to speak. Justin Heller. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. So a few years back, I stood in front of you guys when we were asking for the rates to be increased. I've been a very long time. 
since the towing rates have been increased. Since then, obviously, we've seen a few things change in our economy. Um, so I want to ask a question. Who here is paying the same amount of money to fill your car up with gas as you did three years ago? No one, right? Well, guess what? Tow trucks? Same way. Um, the piece of paper you have there, I just kind of outlined a few of our operational expenses and the increases that we've seen in this inflationary period. Um, I'll just kind of give you the, the brief in a nutshell. The trucks cost. Last time I was here in front of you guys, our records that we purchased were $73,900 and some odd dollars. Today, as of last month, they are $108,000 for the same identical tow truck. Our fleet insurance costs, you know, those things that we have to have to operate in every county, we've increased 22.58%. Our fuel costs from the last time I stood in front of you guys has gone up 75% as a, as a small business to put fuel in our trucks to keep them on the road. If you look at our payroll, obviously, all of our staff, their rents have gone up, homeowners insurance has gone up, et cetera. Our staff, our payroll costs have gone up 43.3%. Now, we also have some miscellaneous expenses, you know, your rents, your operational, you know, all kinds of different stuff. That's gone up about 25.2%. In total, to summarize it, since the last time we were here, our cost of business has gone up 40.3%. That's astronomical for a small business. What you guys may not realize is that the towing industry is a lot bigger than people think. We are a huge sector of employment for residents in Pinellas County. If you look at the fact that what it cost us to operate back then versus what it costs now, I know you guys have a proposed rate of 19 or 18 or 19 percent increase for the new rate renewal. Unfortunately, that doesn't cut it. Those rates that you guys have now were sent over a year ago. I don't know about you guys, my homeowner's insurance does not cost the same as it cost last year. We all know why. So my hope is that we can get a fair, equal rate increase that will not only help us be able to still service Pinellas County, but by doing it and letting the bigger tow companies like ourselves and some of our other uh, companies that are here to be able to still do with the, what, the way we do, the right way, under the law, and not allow these little smaller guys to come up and just start doing it like the Wild Wild West because the big ones have to pull out because we can't afford to operate in Pinellas County. I know it's a big ask, but if you guys could be appreciated. So, in your opinion, Mr. Seaman, what would the, I'm, Mr. Hiller? Yeah. What would your proposal be? If you look below there, I put down what the Hillsborough County rates are. Um, they just updated that less than 90 days ago. That would be a very fair increase. It would bring us right in line with Hillsborough County. We'd be able to keep our salaries competitive, keep our newer trucks on the road, not running into, you know, getting the older hunkety junk trucks and stuff that just you don't want in your county. I mean, at the end of the day, cost of living's up. People are migrating here by the thousands. Got it. We get Teslas, we get electronic brake cars that have all these extra things that we weren't experiencing four or five years ago in the towing industry. So for us to stay cutting edge and us to follow the law, we got to be able to afford the equipment that we are required to use. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Seaman. Mike Seaman. Good evening. Hello, how are you? I haven't uh, seen you in I'll, a long time. Yes, ma'am. I'll be brief. Um, I'm Mike Seaman, Executive Director of Professional Records of Florida, and we've been working with staff, and we very well appreciate it. Uh, we had a workshop uh, a while back. Uh, prices have increased. It's been four years since the last price increase. Uh, three years ago was 18%, and like the, the gentleman said, uh, it, is, it is more now. Uh, we would like you to consider uh, doing a CPI that some other counties do, and that way uh, we wouldn't have to address this <clears throat> as we're doing now. You, you would have an option of uh, looking at it and voting for it if it is uh, you know, warranted. So thank you for your time. 
I'll be here if you have any questions. Always nice to see you. Thank you good, for coming this you evening. Guys. Thank you. Uh, lastly, before we take questions from the commissioners, Commissioner Peters, are you with us? I am. I don't have questions at this time. I'm sorry? Doesn't have questions. No you don't have any input? Not yet. N not at this time, no. All right. Any Commissioner Flowers? Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is the first time I've had the opportunity to have an interaction related to this type of communication. And I know during our workshop, um, Barry did share that there had been communication, as the gentleman just stated. And so I'm not sure. And I know uh, Commissioner Peters did say at that time she, she asked, you know, are we good because you had one group that was not supportive last time and another group that was. So <clears throat> since there, there is a, a big difference um, between the percentage that's being recommended and the amount that, uh, that's being recommended by staff and the, uh, the percentage that we're talking about, I don't know if it would be probably um, to our best interest maybe to have staff go back and continue the dialogue and communication rather than trying to determine what the middle ground may be or whatever from the numbers that are presented. I, I certainly am just throwing that out there for conversation. Um, because, um, like I said, this is my first time interacting and trying to make a determination based on the possible percentage of increase. I do agree, sir. All of We were just talking about that at our workshop, how our auto insurance has gone up, our homeowner's insurance has gone up. So, you know, we were talking about that at our, our workshop. So that's for everybody. And I don't believe your ask is to say, you know, you need to provide us an increase that matches what our life expenses increases are, because that's everybody. But um, I, I, I would just lend that to the conversation because there's been that conversation and dialogue. Perhaps we send it back and let Barry and his team communicate a little bit more to see what can what you all can come up with and bring it back. If there's no rush, if there's no <clears throat> time certain on this. Thank you, Commissioner But I'm Flowers. just putting that out. I would also <clears throat> like to ask Mr. Marson Johnson to come forward if he's here. Good evening. Oh, I'm sorry. Good evening, Good evening um, I own two towing companies here in Pinellas County, one Elvis Towing and one No Tow 24-hour motorcycle hey, towing. Elvis. And I'm also the president for PWF, Professional Record Operators of Florida. Um, like it was stated, we supplied the 18% request almost a year ago. And just as the other gentleman spoke, it's gone up catastrophically. Um, we are in support of at <coughs> least the 18%, but there were three issues that need to still yet be addressed. One, the CPI, which would save you guys and the staff a lot of work. If it goes up that amount, then let's move it that, that far forward. That's, that's not a, 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 we don't have to reinvent the wheel there. That way we don't have to do this every three years and it drag out to four. Um, the other situation is the dolly charge that we had asked for back in 19. Um, a lot of the new cars that we're bringing out, uh, the electronic cars, uh, the electronic brakes, the all-wheel drives and all of that, um, with us in the area that we live in, we've got the parking garages. You can't get a flatbed into a parking garage. You're lucky if you can get an auto loader in there. So the dollies is a very major piece of equipment that's required and it needs to be able to be charged for. Um, we've, we're asking for a $40 charge for the dollies, which um, matches a lot of the other counties that already authorize that, as long as it's documented for that piece of equipment. The other is the gate fee, um, which would be only chargeable after hours. Just like if you have to call a, a company to come out and service, they charge a nighttime uh, service fee. So you're looking at from 6 o'clock in the evening until 8 o'clock in the morning, a uh, fair rate. And what we were looking at is a $50 uh, gate fee, which is also accommodating by quite a few of the other counties within the state of Florida. And that's already proven forward. Um, otherwise, we've had a great rapport uh, with uh, consumer protection. Um, and like uh, I said, the, the 18 that we gave a year ago, um, just like the gentleman said, we've got some of our, our members that have gone up as high as 50%. Um, I had one that called me the other day. His insurance went from 300000 to 600000 down in South Florida. So, you know, you got to be able to set that off, or what are you going to do with all the cars when you don't have any towing companies that can't do the business? Correct. So I appreciate your time, and thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Um, Barry, it seems to me from listening to the discussion thus far, 
and Commissioner Peters, if you want to weigh in, please do, um, that we need to have more homework done between county administration and the staff to get with all these folks and come back to us with a recommendation because right now we're shooting from the hip. Well, actually, you have staff here that could address this, um, and Doug Templeton is here, and so he can certainly address Are that. Are they prepared to give um, us a recommendation? Well, there are issues that have been raised tonight that aren't he within the recommendations here. He set a, a level. He can, he can certainly address that. And then you can decide whether you want staff to go back and work with them on these additional things. He said that the information's dated. We can certainly do that. There's no rush to this, so we can certainly, you don't want to do staff work here you know, tonight, so we can certainly send that back. But it might be helpful, you know, to hear from Doug as as part of the staff Adam? recommendation. All right. Well, let's hear. I, I do have a comment, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, Commissioner. I do have a I do have a comment. All right. So I I believe and Barry, correct me if I'm wrong, but they only had one increase in like 23 years. I have no idea. That's correct. <laughs> the first increase that we had it was in 2019. Was in 2019 yeah. From 2000. So we've shouldered a lot of expenses for numerous years, and a lot of us have been in the business. I mean, we've been here for 46 years. So um, it's one of those things where we're just trying to keep alive at this point. You know? I hear you. But the, the, so, the um, just to, to, to finish my, my thought here, if that's okay, um, and I do want to hear from staff. I absolutely want to hear from staff. But, um, I, I, you know, when you all had come back a couple of years ago and explained about the dollies and when I've met with you and you've explained it, it makes sense. And with the electric cars, those electric cars weren't even really a thing so much in 2019. Um, so technology has changed and uh, the fact that they've had one increase in 23 years. Uh, yeah, I would like staff to go back in my opinion. I do want to hear from staff first. but. I would like to come back, but I would want it to come back quickly. I don't think we should be putting it off that much longer. Um, I agree. I think they should be able to get together and negotiate this uh, quicker. But but once in 23 years, if in fact staff confirms that, that's that's you know they're not coming to the well every couple couple of years. I mean they're not, and and technology and costs certainly have changed over the years. So um, I, I'll I'll wait and make comments later after staff if I need to. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Doug, would you like to come forward, please, and state your case while we're in this process? Good evening. <coughs> this is Doug Templeton, Consumer Protection. Um, Consumer Protection does recognize that it's critical uh, to review these rates on an ongoing basis um, to help maintain a competitive towing Can industry. you speak up a little bit, please? <clears throat> yes, Thank you. We do recognize it's important to review these rates on an ongoing basis. Um, the industry has certainly seen cost stressors um, in recent years with increase in labor costs, vehicle costs, insurance costs, as you heard. Um, you know, we also feel this must be balanced against the ability of consumers to absorb these additional impacts as well, um, and as, as we do determine what is fair. So consumers have also seen rising costs, economic stressors across the board for cost of living. So as I mentioned at the, the uh, uh, workshop in April, um, part of that review process, we do review the rates across the, the state. We also meet with the towing industry representatives. We met with the professional record operators of Florida. Um, we also requested input from our law enforcement partners. Um, and we did also invite all of our towing operators in the county that we could identify um, September last year to meet with us at the Magnolia Room and provide input on this process as well. So the current ordinance updates several different things. Contact information, clarify some definitions, um, and the towing agreement details requires records to be available on site as well. Um, the current recommendations reflect the initial proposed rates that were received from professional record operators of Florida last year, um, which we thought were fair and had documentation to support that as well. Um, within their proposal, it includes increases in the fees. The, the base towing rates were increasing approximately 18%. Uh, the mileage fees are going up approximately 20% with these recommended fees. Daily storage fees go up 17%. Labor costs would be going up 20%, administrative fees 30%, the TARP fees approximately 75%, and credit card processing fees approximately 33%. So with these increases, the cost of a typical trespass tow would increase by approximately 19%. So when you look at the previous rate increase in December of 19 and the current proposed increase combined, that is an approximately 51% increase 
um, in the cost of a typical trespass tow since December of 2019. Again, understanding that the fees had not been increased prior to 2019. So when we're looking at those rates, um, I think it's important to, to, to compare that. There are variation with these different types of fees. Um, Pinellas does not have a registration or licensing function, um, and that poses some less overhead than some of the other counties. Um, one of the recommendations, as mentioned, was a dolly fee by professional records. Um, that fee was not included in this process. Um, Pinellas historically has not had this fee. There are two counties of the counties that we reviewed in that packet that have a dolly fee. That's Miami-Dade and recently Orange County, as was mentioned, just passed it. That fee is only uh, applies to police-directed tows. Trespass tows, which is what part of the request is here as well, it does not apply in those counties. So there are two counties that we've identified, and neither one of them applies uh, trespass tow. Just for example, in, in Orange County, um, they also increased their flat, their, their base towing rate. Went from $125 to $135. Um, certain counties charge for mileage, allow for charging. Other counties don't. Pinellas County does. It's a 10-mile max. We're looking at increasing that to $5 from $4. So for your base tow fee in Pinellas County, you'd be looking at going from $125 to $147, and then your mileage would go from $40 max to $50 max. So that's $197 potentially for a tow. In Orange County, the max for a base tow fee is going to be $135 because they do not allow for mileage. Over on the other coast and east coast, they also do not typically allow for mileage to be charged. So when you look at, you know, we're trying to look at, it's not apples to apples typically, but we are trying to look at when you have a car towed, what does that look like in Orange County? What does it look like in Pinellas? What does it look like in Hillsboro? Um, so we have looked at those different fees. Um, and I think that's important. You know, Orange County also has a business tax and insurance requirements as well. Um, so all they, like I said, although they did add that dolly fee, it was specific. We verified this with them. It is specific to police directed tows only. Um, after hours gate fee was mentioned as well. Um, those have not been a part of our ordinance in the past. We feel that maintaining a fair base rate and really reviewing that base rate um, for existing fees should address the cost of doing business rather than adding these new fees into the ordinance. Um, tow operators are required by state statute to be available to monitor their phones at all times. Um, they're also required by state statute to return to the site within an hour to release a vehicle. Um, so if you have an instance where a consumer's vehicle, say, is towed at 10 p.m. at night, they get up in the morning at 6 a.m. to go to work and realize they've parked in the wrong spot, they, you know, they were towed properly. Um, when they make that request, they have an hour to come in. If that's not during normal business hours or office hours, say 8 to 6, although their car was towed at 10 p.m. at night, um, they will have their base tow fee. They'll have the mileage that's associated with that. Um, they would potentially now add a $50 after hours gate fee and then you would also potentially be looking at after six hours they can start to charge storage fees and we're increasing that from $25 to $30 so you'd be looking at your base fee, your mileage, your after hours gate fee and then your um, potential storage fee um, after those six hours so um, there is some significant costs that would come with these additional fees. Um, our ordinance also does not provide for any special fees. It's specific to that. It references dollies and about 10 other types of Slim Jims, Go Jacks, different things that when the ordinance was put into place, there was a concern regarding the number of fees that, you know, if you have these additional fees and you have a separate fee for each of those. Um, so basically special fees, special services are exempt at this point from the ordinance. So it, it referenced that specifically. Um, CPI, uh, you know, when we met in 2019, the mechanism to review this or continue to review this that we, we discussed with the board was to review these rates periodically at a three-year rate. So um, CPI can fluctuate. It could be a challenge with education and realigning these fees each year um, to ensure that those rates are being charged properly, uh, which could result in some potential enforcement challenges. Again, we do not have a robust or regulatory program in place. We don't have licensing, et cetera. I think when you look at these gate fees, you look at the dolly fees, you look at CPIs, and just, these are all new fees. You know, I think the thought is how do we account for some of these fees as part of that base tow? We continue to go back and review that. Um, we can certainly add new fees if that's what the board <coughs> desires, um, or do a more frequent review of these existing fees and bring back recommendations by resolution. If we update the ordinance with new fees that would come through an ordinance amendment versus the ordinance does allow for resolution or fees to be increased by resolution if that's the goal. Um, 
uh, to address Hillsborough's rates. Um, they are currently the highest in the state. We reviewed across the board at the different counties that we reviewed. Um, and I think they're reflective of higher overhead there. They did just pass new rates, um, as mentioned. And you know, in Pinellas, like, as I mentioned, we have no regulatory license function. They have an entire regulatory structure. They have uh, certain levels of insurance requirements. They have background checks and licensing of drivers. They have licensing of businesses, um, inspection of vehicles. Um, so some counties have different levels of overhead. Um, so I think that from that standpoint, um, they are the highest. When you look at a standard typical trespass tow, they have the highest rates in the county. So we're, or, I'm sorry, in the state. So we are looking at Pasco is, is at 150 for a base tow fee. We'd be at 147. Um, Hillsboro is now at 160. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, so uh, as the owner of a transportation company, I, I can certainly sympathize with, uh, with the rising costs that these folks are, are dealing with. Um, and it's been a number of years since they've, since they've had an increase. But my suggestion would be that we, we, we approve the rates that the staff recommendation that we have now, but we revisit this in a year. Because uh, it's been a number of years since, since these guys have had, a, had an increase, and I think that this would give them some immediate relief by, by doing this tonight. But I think we need to do a review more frequently than every three years, because we're still under an inflationary time, which there's still a lot of inflationary pressures, particularly in terms of when it comes to vehicle operators. So, um, so I, think there's a, I think there's a motion already on the table. I would, I would second that motion. Um, the only thing that I would add was that we revisit this in a year. Well, I would prefer to give them some relief that's a little more eminent than waiting a year. We're going to give them this one. Right. We're going to give them what? The one that their rec yeah. staff's recommending right. is uh -oh. is some relief. Right. It's not what I mean, they're yeah. asking for, but it is a lot better than where they are today. Today. Right. So they'd have that for a year and then come back in a year and take a look at it again. Right. Commissioner Peters, do you have input? Um, you know, I would like to see them get the rate that they're recommending, but so they brought up three issues, if I'm not mistaken, the CPI, the gate, and the dolly. And so those are things that seem to be an impasse that need to be worked out. Um, I, you know, I don't know if, you know, like Commissioner Scott said, there, it's, we're in inflationary times. Um, I really want them, you know, <laughs> I, I have no doubt with them getting one rate increase in 23 years that they have, you know, been bare bones for a long time. And so I, you know, I'd like to see them get the rate, um, but I'd also like to see some kind of negotiation with the other three issues, if you could, but, but not, not in a year. I'd like to see it more timely. Thank you. I agree with you. Can, I, can we do, as Commissioner Flowers? So... The, in the presentation, it was stated that the meeting that was held where these rates were talked about and potentially negotiated with the 18%, was that a year ago or had you met with them since then? I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around, and I know sometimes we have other things that come up, but why did it take a year to come back to, to actually move this through when... This was a good rate maybe a year ago, but a whole nother year has passed. I'm just trying to, because I know what we've done with other contracts where we've had persons come in and, you know, this may be a stretch, but we've had some individuals come in and ask um, for us to um, do some change orders because, their contra because the costs have increased and we granted those change orders. And we've had other things to happen because of cost increase. And we've made those adjustments because of the cost increase. Mm -hmm. And we ourselves here in the county for its operations, mm -hmm. you know, we see cost increase. And we're trying to maneuver through that even with the budget we're in right now and the one that we have moving forward. So I'm just trying to get some clarity on sure. that. And I'm sorry if it was said and I missed it. I apologize. No, but. Absolutely. So when we last met in December of 19, um, we had indicated that we would continue to review, and as opposed to CPI at that time, the, the agreement was that we would come back and review every three years to determine if any changes need to be made, if any updates need to be made. So in December of 2019, that occurred, so that would be December of 22, um, that we'd come back. 
I believe professional record operators of Florida reached out to us in July of 22, um, and they asked to meet with us. They provided these rates um, to us. We then had set up, and staff were planning to prior to the three years, we set up the meeting in September of 22 to meet with tow operators. We sent a letter, met with them in the Magnolia room, received feedback from them, um, and then we started our review process to review the rates elsewhere. Um, you know, we understand that it has taken time, um, and, and certainly, you know, there's a review process internally that we go through and then um, bringing it forward. So we can absolutely continue to do these in a more frequent basis um, if, that's, if that's the request and um, continue to meet. And at the meeting that you all held in the Magnolia Room, do you have an approximation of about how many towers, tow companies, I'm sorry, sure. that came? I, I'm not necessarily looking for the small versus the sure. the large or whatever, you know, Tri-J towing, Elvis towing. Yep. But Representatives from tow companies, even if there were three individuals there, I'd say it was, it was close to 15 to 20, probably approximately, that we had. Yeah. I just, I could see more um, to, to be given them more, and, you know, I'll use myself as an example. Driving here to a meeting one day, something fell off the back of a contractor's truck. It cut two of my tires. I have a Mercedes. Um, I, I need a flatbed. You're not going to pull my car behind you. Mm -hmm. So it took longer for the tow, you know, truck mm -hmm. to get there because of the type of vehicle I needed um, to be able to latch this cable into this little piece on my car to pull it up so that they didn't do any further damage to my vehicle. Um, and I, I can see where even downtown Clearwater, downtown St. Pete, they're building garages in order to accommodate for these eight-story, 21-story buildings. So there could be the potential for, you know, having to go up in there and talk. So I'm just, I'm not saying you did a bad job or anything like that, um, but I'm just trying to get to a place of agreement because I could see where their costs have escalated. And even at going at the 18%, which, you know, our employees don't get an 18% <laughs> increase, but um, I could see where based on all everything that's happening and diesel is way more than the increase in regular gas. I could just see where this is just really a, a, a hard time. And that's why I recommend it maybe going back and just seeing what can be done with the numbers. Um, but I'll continue to hear from my colleagues and go from there. I, I think everybody's doing everything in earnest, but I think as the time has progressed, it's not anyone's fault, but as time has progressed, costs have increased and it's whether or not what was a good and fair option then would be a good and fair option a year uh, from then, which is now. Thank you. Members, anybody else? Well, Commissioner uh, Scott. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so it sounds like it's hard to, to compare apples to apples between different counties because of the various fees that some allow and some don't allow. But um, you, you talked about the, the average tow, how if we went with the um, recommended rates, how would we compare, how would Pinellas County compare with, with other counties around the state? Um, if, in looking at those fees, I believe we would be, Pasco, Hills, Hillsborough would be the highest in the state that we've identified. Um, Pasco is at 150, we'd be going to 147. Okay. Um, We're lower, aren't we? But j just underneath Pasco for that, um, I think, you know, when you look at TARP fees, if we go to $35, that's much higher than, you know, I think Hillsborough may still be at 20 There's There's different fees as far as, um, as, as you mentioned, the consistency on that is definitely not. We have four classes of vehicles. Uh, right. Hillsborough has three classes of vehicles. You know, so our actually our largest vehicle group is, is much higher than uh, – Hillsborough is at 475 for for the medium to heavy duty. We're we'd be going to 520 for our class because it's four classes of vehicles. So it is hard to to that's why we kind of look at in the typical trespass tow is a car. That's mm -hmm. what we usually are looking at and reviewing. Um, but these other fees are certainly impacted as well. Um, Pasco would be at $150 for the base tow and five dollars. We would be looking to go to 147 and five dollars uh, for your mileage. Um, Polk is at 125. However, they don't have mileage fees. Um, 
The rest of the counties that we looked at, Broward is at $160, so they are at the same rate as Hillsborough. But again, if you look at mileage, they don't charge for mileage. So, so those, when you add the mileage into this, the, I mean, it gets expensive pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where Hillsborough would be the highest. Um, uh, beyond that, Miami-Dade's at 145. Orange County just went from 125 to 135. Uh, Palm Beach is at 138. So going to 147, we would essentially be probably the second highest or right there with PASCO um, on our fee schedule. So when you look... But, but okay. that doesn't take into consideration, excuse me for interrupting, mm -hmm. the demographics of driving around in Pinellas County are a lot different than some of these other areas. And mm -hmm. I beg to say that that makes a difference too. State law does require, for our size county, it's a 10-mile max that they could tow. Um, and so for counties such as Polk, where it's larger, more rural, that, that distance that they can travel expands. Um, but again, depending on where you're at, they may or may not allow for those mileage rates to be charged as well. So if, you, if like I said, when you look at a, a typical tow, if you will, of a, of a trespass tow of a vehicle, of a car, those costs, we are going to be you know right up there um, it's Hillsborough, and then it's going to be Pasco and, and Pinellas right there. Commissioner Latvala. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to uh, pipe in and express my support for the staff recommendation um, that was presented today. And um, I trust our staff to negotiate the best uh, deal um, going forward uh, for both the small business owners as well as our residents. Um, I don't want to, um, you know, start negotiating from the dais and trying to hash out different, um, you know, things where we're comparing apples to oranges. Um, I think that, um, you know, you're the, you're the expert and, and you know what you're doing. Um, um, you know, as for the timetable, you know, whether it's six months or a year or whatever on those three other issues, um, you know, I'll leave that up to you guys. All right. Um, then I think you have some direction here. Yes. All right. Barry, do you have anything? To Wait a minute. First, you got to you got to adopt what whatever you're going to adopt. All right. Hold on. And, and second, I'd like to know when you would like this to come back. Commissioner Eggers. Well, no, I, I, I'm going to support uh, Commissioner Scott's uh, you know, motion. I don't know who made the first or who made the motion of the second. I'll be a second or whatever. But um, I do think we have to balance what's, you know, with our residents. Um, I mean, this is going to be a this is going to be a big jump in itself. It may not be for for the for the towers. But at least if we do it tonight, then it starts immediately and then they get that relief and then I would like to have us re-look this in a year so that we can, at that point, see if any of these other issues gain any, any ground, see what others, other places are doing on these three items that they brought up, um, and then we can maybe have that discussion in a workshop um, and then bring it back in a year. But uh, I'd like to just get something now done and passed so that we can get some relief immediately and then look at it soon. I agree, except I don't think, does it take a year, Barry? <laughs> well, I, 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 we're going to work on making the time periods of when we meet and when we bring an ordinance to you. We're going to tighten that up. But other than that, I mean, I think that if we're putting this in place, a year would be a reasonable time period to relook at that. We'll, bring, we'll get back to them next spring, bring an ordinance to you next summer, and uh, that way we, because even, even the time periods for, for advertising and things like that, that's, that's a couple months right there, so... Okay. Commissioner Peters, you have any input at this point? Um, my thought was I would have preferred to see it done in six months. I mean, it sounds like we have the data. It sounds like we have most everything. I mean, it's really more negotiating at this point, I think. So does it really have to be a year is just my question. Would six months not work, Barry? I mean... Well, Commissioner, we certainly can, we can certainly look at six months. I think the one thing that Doug was pointing out is, you know, we're... We can't take the highest person in the state and then and then say, well, over here they do this and over here they do this and, and combine that because then that's what our residents are going to pay, which would be high, you know, in comparison to other places. I think you did a good job tonight kind of showing you that even with this, 
even though it may not be where we want to be or that what they want to be and, and and we can account for those costs and we can come back and look at that that it's a reasonable fee we're, we're going to be up at one of the higher um, for an average tow in the state um, and so we can certainly look at it but whether you want to look at it six months or a year that's up to you if you want us to look at it at six months we certainly can um, but you know and I'm not saying that you know everything they want is what they're going to get I'm just saying it's negotiating um, that's fair. And if they, I mean, and they haven't come to the table to talk to staff for a year. That was 2022, correct? So a lot has happened in a year. Is there, you know, and if we've already got the data, it's not like we're spending a lot more time collecting that data anymore because I think we've got the data. So it's negotiating. I'm not saying that we should, you know, just give them everything they want, but I think <coughs> there's some negotiating there. And that's kind of my thought. So I just don't know why it would be a year. I, I think six months would be better. That's just my thought. Pleasure of the board. No later than 12 months. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we have some direction. There's a motion. I had made the original motion um, for the staff recommendation of the 18%. Um, I would add to that motion to have a report brought back to us in a year for reconsideration of um, the potential for adjusted compensation and Commissioner Scott, I don't yeah, know if you want a second. I will second that. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any any more conversation? Question. Question from Commissioner Justice. Thank you. And yeah, it does. I, I look back and I was found emails from Mr. Johnson and I back in April, I guess, was when we started talking about this. But was there in that year that we're talking about, is that for those other issues or we're going to discuss those other issues or in the in the meantime? Well, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, the staff, I think, is still comfortable with the recommendation. In, in the totality of the tow, or the average tow, we're higher than most. We're not as high as Hillsboro. The, um, if you, so I think looking at that and, and starting that process in earnest, um, but you know, later than a year, we'll bring that back. I think they make some good points. If there's new information, we can certainly collect that. Uh, there may be others that have a proposed fee change that we're not aware of. And so we can re, re, recalibrate that and make sure we're on track and accounting for their costs to where we have reputable, um, you know, hardworking tow operators that can survive. And so I, I think it's it's reasonable, but it, it'll take a little time to do an ordinance modification. Now, Doug, you did mention that if they pass this, they could update the fees through a uh, resolution versus ordinance. Yes, okay. Existing fees. Existing fees. So, so then uh, we wouldn't have to be an ordinance next time. So, so this would be an ordinance. The next time would be a resolution. Just yeah. if we're just adjusting fees, that makes it simpler. Mm -hmm. Notification requirements, publications, all those things. That's some of the lead time. Okay. okay. Good. Yes. Okay. So vote. Right. Oh. Are we voting? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, let's vote. My vote is a yes, Madam Chair. Mr. Peters votes yes. And that is a unanimous vote on number 45. 44. Oh, no, 44. Number 45, Barry. Agenda item number 45 is a proposed resolution supplementing the fiscal year 2023 operating budget for unanticipated revenue for emergency communications E911 system, opioid abatement, and street lighting district funds. The public hearing was properly advertised and an affidavit of publication has been received for filing. No correspondence has been received by the clerk and the matter is properly before the board to be heard. Commissioner Eggers. Yeah, Barry, if we could possibly take a look at the item, the $1.230 million uh, item, and just, I was trying to follow the number, right. and it seemed like, you know, you, you've seen those, Sorry. like, hats that just kind of get shifted around, and I can't, I couldn't follow where the money was going. And I we just, want you to follow the money. I didn't mean sure. that. Okay. <laughs> I just need to know what's you going on. It's like. we, yeah. we, we don't I want you to find the ball, but we want you to see it. Anything, anytime it has you. anything to do with justice, <laughs> I want to make sure that, no, Yeah, so thank you. I'd like to please explain. 
Take Certainly. a moment to, to absorb the insult, and then you can. <laughs> <laughs> so, Everybody take a think, deep breath. I think he's still doubled over. I don't know. <laughs> well, go Knowles. That's all I can say. So uh, okay. I can't follow. Um, but thank you, Commissioners. Chris Rose, Office of Management and Budget. Uh, that first part right there is taking part of what was uh, adopted by this board for the Florida Dream Center it is 1.8 million dollars was in the original recommendation the 1.2 is the purchase price the 600,000 595 is the renovation price that 1.2 is going to be in the recommendation is recommended to go into the safety and emergency services area a perfectly allowable ARPA expenditure and out of that it will free up general fund to be used for the purchase of the dream center we did that in abundance of caution so that Treasury would look upon us favorably in hopes. We do have some trouble getting guidance from Treasury, I'll say that. So, uh, Since it's a land purchase and it's cleaner because we're reimbursing ourselves because it has to come back into that fund. So uh, it, since it's a reimbursement, it was just cleaner to use non-ARPA for that. So it's, it's switching those two things around. Yes, sir. Commissioner Scott. Wait, I know. Commissioner Eggers is done. No, I, no I'm not. I, I'm still not following, so I'm not going to support it. I, I, I'm going to have to take more time on it. So um, if we can bring it back, fine. If we have to do it tonight, then you know, I'm not going to take more time up going through this. But it just doesn't I, – I can't follow uh, the different machinations on this on this, this one more thing. 1.23. Don't talk about anything else. Yes, sir. Talk about okay. that and that only. The 1.23 million was originally ARPA. We will take that ARPA, put it into safety and emergency services. That will free up general fund money. That general fund money will be used for what the ARPA was first going to be used for, which is the purchase of the Dream Center. So, and we're not doing it directly because we need an arm's length transaction. We need it to go out and come back in. When it comes back in, we're good. I don't get it. Our know. land purchase. We, yes. So the, the land was originally purchased using? Using penny. Penny funds. Yes. Okay. And so to reimburse ourselves, okay, then that we, we would rather it be, that not be ARPA money since we're reimbursing ourselves for the land purchase. <laughs> The, the property in question was, as the administrator referenced, was originally purchased with penny funds. They weren't just penny funds, though, let me say. They were restricted because, if you recall, and those of you that were here, for penny three, we had, I'll call it a subcategory, of funds that were allocated to the acquisition of land for affordable housing, so which, is one of the which is one of the allowable uses. This property, when originally purchased, was part of what some of you all may remember we called the D&D &D properties. Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is the fire station yes. that was in there. That's correct. Um, a lot of the other houses that were purchased have been put to affordable use. This is being proposed and is being used for a different purpose other than affordable housing. So this is to make sure the, uh, that we are not running afoul of the constraints in regard to the penny funds, we were going to use ARPA dollars and decided that a better use would be general fund dollars. Okay. Okay. So, one quick, so, Scott? so then just thinking ahead, so, so next month we're gonna declare this property surplus property and then the, the transaction with the Dream Center? Has just I'm just trying to think ahead of. There will be a purchase mechanism. I'll okay. be honest. I don't I don't know how that will work, but mm -hmm. yes, there will be a purchase mechanism. Okay. So the, the so the whole purpose for this today is just to make sure we're we're doing a clean ARPA transaction, and we know that we won't get in trouble with Treasury. Yes, sir. Okay. That's correct. And then the Dream Center, they will they will have the property. They can do the renovations, and it'll be restricted for that use. Okay. Move approval. Second. All right, it's been moved and, it's, and seconded. Then uh, please open the voting board. Madam Chair, I'll be a yes. You're a yes? Well, treasurer don't know what treasurer is supposed to be done. No, you're right. Yeah. There, there. And getting guidance out of them is extremely difficult. Guidance comes out different like every week. Yeah. 
All right, that's uh, six yeses and one no. The one no is Commissioner Eggers. All right, and that, Point that out. there com completes our yeah. agenda for this evening, correct? Correct. Look at that, everybody. We are done. Seven right. ten. Thank you for all your hard work. <laughs> we are adjourned. Great. Thank you. Bye, Commissioner.